three, two, one, go! Hope you all are excited for the beginning episode of Warhams! <laughs> yeah, buddy! Yeah! I've been shot! Welcome, everybody. What? <laughs> Alright, so, welcome, everyone, to Warhams. This is a Warhammer 40,000 tabletop RPG show, and I am your host, Zorn the Bear, and I would like to bring it around the horn, basically introducing all of the players in our lovely Game Master. So, the person who is playing Pie Brain is. Speaker D! I'm the leader of the team. And, uh, and what, uh, and just for people who are referenced on TTS and stuff, what characters have you, uh, voiced in TTS? I have voiced Vect, I have voiced the Emperor, I have voiced, uh, Commissar A, I have voiced, um, uh, Inrium Spectre, and many others. Excellent. And then further coming down, we have someone playing Reeve Van Horn, who was our Inquisitor Acolyte, and you all in his played by... Or no. Don't Arundel. Don't Arundel, Arundel, Arundel is here. Hello, That's, that is I. I am, I am me. Hello. Arundel. And Arundel, uh, what has your contributions been to uh, the Emperor had a text of speech of ice universe? Well, um, I voice act uh, sparingly, small bit parts here and there. No one particularly uh, valuable at times, but I am one of the writers, and so is uh, Speaker D. And I'm really surprised he didn't bring that up. I forgot. How can you One forget the right? <laughs> you, you and I butt heads frequently on this. How can you forget? I'm going I to beat you. The wars of the deep scars. I'm going to hit you with a rake. Stop. Okay. And uh, and also, and quickly, uh, Speaker D, what, ty what type of character are you playing? I am playing the Skatarius probationary tech priest, uh, Pi Brain who is a rather eccentric individual. <coughs> And, uh, Nerdell, you want to talk about your character real quick? Just, like, what his class is, archetype, etc. Ah, uh, yes. He is, a he is an Ordo Xenos uh, Inquisitorial Acolyte. He is learning to understand Xenobiology so he can use it to better the Imperium of Man, or just so he can, uh, vivisect things. Because he does that a lot, I will hope. Excellent. And then, of course, we have our captain of our lovely ship that will bring us out throughout various objectives of the Crusade, Captain Zedek, and he is played by... Hoagie Crow, thank you very much. As much as Bray may think he's the real brains of the operation, I'm clearly the, uh, the guy in charge here, and future hero of the Imperium, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, you want to talk about your character real quick, and, uh, who he is, what he does? So, uh, Captain Zedek is our resident rogue trader, pilot of the ship. I don't know if we're going to reveal the name of that ship yet. Uh, but we'll find out as we go. They, they will. Very cocky, but has a heart of gold as much as he tries to be a gallivanting rogue trader as so many people he's idolized before. And with that, of course, even though we have our band of things, of course, I am also playing Lorne, who is a uh, pretty much a sanctioned psyker, and who is basically crazy. Even though we're all here together, we're here to suffer at the hands of the true of the true star of the show, who is the Game Master, Thurston Hillman. Thank you so much, sir, for coming over and Game Mastering for us. Would you like to talk about yourself a little bit? Well, that's a lie. I, I, I'm not like a like professional, you know, gay Game Master. I'm, I'm just here to torture you. That's what I was hired for. Hello. Hi. Like, oh, well, those was that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. No. no I'm Thurston go. Hillman. Fine. I'm going. Duh. I'm Thurston Hillman. Um, I do game stuff, and I'm here to inflict pain upon all of these players, and I look forward to it. You will see some ridiculous stuff that Alpha and I have put together as part of the the creation of this uh, vestigial limb of TTS. <laughs> and uh, and that is definitely. Definitely think it, a majority of this is basically in the universe of the TTS universe and all that stuff. So any kooky banana stuff you've already seen from the shows, you might kind of see here. And uh, and of course, you might be wondering, wow, this is an overlay with a bunch of stuff on it. What what what's going on here? How how do things work? So we are playing basically a uh, Warhammer 40k tabletop RPG, basically called uh, Wrath and Glory and stuff like that. And uh, obviously, that game encompasses uh, various dice pulls to kind of go for this. And I understand. There's other 40k RPGs out there. We get you. We really like them too. But just for string compatibility, we did this one. We might play some of those later on. But uh, other than that, 
All these dice basically have a purpose. The ones that you're going to see at the bottom left are called glory die, which they will be depleting now. These we use for various things. You kind of see them kind of either below the Twitch, uh, Twitch video player or in the about section if you're on mobile, and you'll be able to see kind of the little things that they do. They'll kind of be explained as the show goes on, but they kind of help with like improving rolls whenever we need them or doing some extra damage. Uh, the things you can kind of see on Brian's character there, you can kind of see the dice kind of flicker on and off. Those are called Wrath Dice. They are basically kind of like, oh, we need to re-roll some failed rolls that happened, or we want to use them to influence the story in some way. It's a very story-driven game. But of course, the uh, red dice at the bottom right are called Ruin uh, Dice here, in which all these dice were custom-made, which uh, artist I can't remember his name exactly right now because I can't find my credit list. He did an amazing job on this. Like it is superb on what he's done with all this art, and uh, basically, we the game master starts with four ruin po points at this point, and you guys are able to influence the game. Uh, one of the things you wanted to do is basically allow you guys to help support the show, which you'll see the little things at the bottom left there in that little blue section on how you can influence the game and on how these kind of affect the game as they go. Of course, it does bring up some concerns. Some people be like, "Well, what if someone who has a bigger wallet than me comes in and tries to pay to win the game and mess it up?" One of the things we want to emphasize is that, and, uh, and Spickerty, check your mic thing. It's yes. now a uh, hot mic in there. Oh. And, uh, and basically on what it's, uh, what we want to do. We want to have a good show first. So if you see that we're capped on dice, like right now we're capped on Wrath Dice, we're not banking things. We're not doing extra. We're not going to say, oh, I donated 500 thing thingamajigs. That person's supposed to have 10 dice now. We're not doing that. A show first. We want to make sure you have a good time, and if we don't want someone to come in and like drop a whole bunch of stuff to mess up the game. We're here to have a really good time first, make sure you guys have a good time with us, and we don't want someone's wallet like completely messing up the game. So that's the one thing we want to basically lay down is a hard rule. Once those dice are full, we can't give any more, no matter how much gets put in can't give any more so we want to make sure you enjoy the show and we actually get to enjoy the game so then you can enjoy that in proxy so with all of that thurston yes i think it's time we finally play the game and i stopped saying anything unless i forgot something there's a lot of spill at the start uh yeah yeah i i think i think we're good to go i think there's just a couple things i'm gonna tack on to that the the first of which is we're running a role-playing game on a stream with a whole bunch of people in chat. Uh, one thing about ever running a role-playing game is we're going to get shit wrong occasionally. That's just going to happen. Uh, if you're someone who's familiar with Wrath and Glory, uh, feel free to call us out. It's the only way we're going to get better. Uh, we'll probably yeah, feel just free to, move on. Yeah. But call us out. Don't, like, if, we, if we're doing something wrong, we want to make sure we got it right. So that's, that's rule number one. Um, and yeah, other than that, we're going to kind of go through the system as we get to it. We'll give some kind of explanations as we hit some of the rules and give you an idea of how the core mechanics work for Wrath and Glory. It's a really simple but robust system. And if you saw our trailer, uh, from the TTS channel, you can tell we've been able to get some pretty goddamn hilarious, uh, lines from it. So in the answer awesome. that question in chat of where can we find the background of each of the characters? You get to find out as the show goes on. We like to build upon characters as we go. Various plot points, various background things might evolve as we go. And uh, we highly encourage you to keep watching the show to see how the characters grow with you, along with everything else. But just for a short description of characters and stuff, at least I know for me, for Lorne, he's just a, uh, a psyker who somehow survived Fenris and then got off onto a black ship and became a sanctioned psyker. You'll find more details as we go. So Thurston. Yes. What do you have for us today? Well, our adventure begins on board the sword class frigate Debt Collector, as our party of intrepid heroes assembles for their next mission. Each of our players are members of the recently established Officio Ambassadorium, a group within the crusade they're a part of that travel to Imperial worlds to requisition soldiers and supplies for the wider crusade. Uh, as our adventure begins, our players are in the midst of receiving a hololithic transmission from their direct superior, Minister Mataradam Katja Van Nord, and her vessel, the Magnum Orum Victorium, as it's translating out of system. They're gonna switch over and give you some fancy art right here bam to kind of get us going here Ooh. um 
And, and so all of you are in the, the command deck of the of the debt collector in sort of a, a cradled area where you can have private hololithic conversations. In this case, Katja Van Nord is giving you your initial briefing. So this, this green light sprays out from a projector and inside of which there's this hololithic representation of Katja Van Nord. And she provides you with a greeting. Greetings, adequate agents of the crusade and passable members of the Officio Ambassadorium. Passable? I mean, Yes, passable. I bring tidings of your next mission in service to the glorious Imperium of Mankind. You are to travel to the world of Fathom Four and investigate the disappearance of a previously dispatched embassy. The failure and disappearance of this prior embassy has necessitated the Crusade's leadership to dispatch two other embassies, yourselves and one other, to investigate what has transpired on this world. You will travel to the planet's southern hemisphere, where you will make contact with the local leadership to learn what has occurred on this planet, and begin your work in extracting the requisite tithe, in this case, foodstuffs, and a regiment of at least 1,000 souls. Captain Zedek, your vessel will stay in orbit to provide necessary support. You and the rest of your embassy will take a shuttle down to the surface and meet with the largest settlement you can detect. Now. I expect that I will entertain any questions you may have about your mission, and stating that, I expect there will be some asinine comment from Lorne to kick things off. Go fuck yourself. No, fuck you. <laughs> hey, you <laughs> can't talk to him like that. What gives yeah, you, you the right? You can't talk to me like that at all. Uh, she fidgets I with a diamond necklace that has her symbol of office now perfectly uh, adhered to it and she just takes her mechadendrite like hands oh I, I believe I can talk to you like this what What do you mean we got you that necklace Lorne so you did and it's lovely what I, Reeb I bid you for just a moment Lorne to remember that she can unfortunately tell us what we are doing though I do respect your spunk in this particular occasion could you please redirect it to uh, something more pressing like listening Oh, that's a good point. I'll try to listen. Well, as I've said, I've given you the, the primary mission. Do you have any questions about what I've said so far? Anything you would like me to expand upon? Brain raises his hand. Yeah, brain yes, raises his hand. servant of the machine god. And uh, uh, my name is Pi Brain. Yes, Pi Brain. Yes. I must ask, why are you sending other inferior ambassadorial agents? It's very clear that we are your most adequate and best passable agents. Why do we need more? I prefer not to divulge information on the other units, but I will say that Fathom 4 is a large world, and you will need to discover what you can in the southern hemisphere, while the others work in the northern hemisphere. Mm. But it is to be understood that the points awarded for our success will be pulled between the lot of us. Is that correct? Ah, yes. You refer to your ambassadorial score as part of this mission. I do. Well, I can assure you that should you succeed in finding out what happened to the prior embassy, as well as achieving your objectives of acquiring necessary foodstuffs and your regiment of 1,000 souls for the crusade, that you will receive points. Points? Yes. More points, as usual. Points, points, oh, points. excellent. I love points. Isn't points this exciting? Some... Yes, it is exciting. It makes sure we're better than that other team. I know. How many points do the other teams have compared to us? You will have to find that out after you complete this mission. This will be a defining start. All of the previous missions you have partaken in really have been wiped clean as test missions for this. What? Yes. Uh, oh. Well then. So, so it was all for naught. Just for that diamond necklace. Oh no, she is, she's like handling this diamond necklace like, oh, it was not for naught. <laughs> right. Uh... Oh, Zedek will raise his hand so so slightly. But I will assure you that should you increase your 
embassy's ambassadorial score, and more importantly, make the great mission's prime diagram go up. She kind of looks wistfully off. Then you will be rewarded. But now is not the time to discuss the, the intricacies of our point system. You have a mission. Do you have any other questions about where you're going, what you will be expected to do? Uh, does Captain Zedek will raise his hand ever so slightly. Yes, Captain. Uh, yes, Moderatum. Is there any information you can offer us on why this... This... <laughs> why they've gone missing? Yet another group of Imperial ambassadors have gone missing. All I know about the previous group that was sent is that it consisted of a varied group, much like yourselves. There was an engine seer of the Adeptus Mechanicus, an Imperial guardsman from the death world of Catachan, a rather boisterous preacher, and a talented chirurgeon. What's a, what's a chirurgeon? She looks at Reeb slightly. <clears throat> I look at I look at Reeb as her hologram looks at Reeb. So, <laughs> Lauren, if you are not yes. overly familiar with what a medic is, or indeed anyone who performs uh, surgical, I haven't heard that word. Normally, we call those we'll call those old men who put leaves on your legs. Uh, yes, but I don't do that because, well, let's just say that putting leaves on people's legs is not a imperial standard quality medical attempt. Mine is much better, I assure you. And so would a, well, chirurgeon. Now, what I can tell you is that the other group was dispatched to the planet roughly a half solar cycle ago, a Terran standard. They were supposed to check in after 30 days, but failed to do so. We are now sending you and the other team as follow-up to investigate. Uh, well, I can and only... Uh, speak to the um, uh, the incredible tragedy that they could not claim their points, and uh, we will look forward to competing against the other teams with the utmost sportsmanship. <laughs> okay, so I uh, I agree. That uh, uh, captain. Yes. And um, I assume you know the planet and everything we're going to, correct? Oh, How close as always. Are well, I could tell you in just a moment. I would like to make a scholar check for that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Give give me a scholar check to see what what you know about Fartham Four. With pleasure. Yeah. So, uh. So a complication you see, to start us so, off. So you see, I was going to say it was going to be a complication no matter what, which is an excellent way to describe this. Someone already donated to make sure that was a complication no matter what. Uh, but the. But the specification is as long as it is a uh, non already that we roll complications. So the next one we do, we're dead. Excellent. So to, to, to give our audience a quick explanation of, of how Wrath and Glory works is it is a dice pool based game. So essentially our players are rolling a bunch of D6s uh, and then they have to hit a score. And fours and fives mean they get a success. Sixes mean they get two successes. One through three means nothing. One of the dice, this uh, lovely little red one here, is called the Wrath Dice. And you always roll the Wrath Dice separately. On a six, means really good, means they might get a critical in combat, means they might generate some glory for their party. Really awesome. In this case, that lovely chaos symbol there, that's a one. That creates a complication. Now, complications don't mean the action fails. It just means that something, something not as expected happens out of this. So, with this complication... so. Captain Zedek, you your information on Fartham Four may be a bit out of date, um, so I'm going to give you two pieces of information based on based on your check. Okay. One of which is true, and one of which is patently false. <laughs> right. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Perfect. So the first piece of information that you know is that a Fartham 4 has some kind of, like, soporific hallucinogen in the atmosphere that distorts the, the perception and vision of those people who are on the planet. Oh, is that okay. all? Uh, the other thing you know is that the planet has an overabundance of, of crops that 
are thought to be haunted in that they can grow on their own with basically no labor involved. All right, so magic plants and crazy skies. All right. Terrific. There is no such thing as a magical plant, Captain Zedek. They are simply angry plants. Do you know an angry plant? I don't think plants can be mad either. The Forge World of Lemuria has long done away with piteous plants. Why would I know about them? All right, all right. You've, 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 you've had enough time to banter about this. I will allow you to go on your mission. However, there is one final request I have. And she leans in like the, the hololith grows as her face just fills up most of it. I have a personal request. Something it better not be would... another fucking rock, I swear. Something Lord? that would award bonus points. Bonus <laughs> points? <laughs> I, take I immediately get close. Oh, here we go <laughs> again with the bloody bonus uh, points. And then she, she kind of like pulls back, becomes way more formal. Yes. On a personal note, I've heard that Fathom 4's environment has made it somewhat known for its ability to generate fine cooks. My vessel is lacking in culinary skill. So the acquisition of a talented cook for our crusade, for my ship, will result in bonus points added to your ambassadorial score. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we both cackle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say, ma'am, you really wouldn't have to go terribly far. Pi, you have proven that you're a very capable cook, haven't you? Ah, uh, yes. I'm excellent at the production of nutrient paste. My favorite flavor is nutrient paste flavor. Precisely. You you eat? <laughs> well, I... with that, I will leave you to your mission. The Emperor protect... And then she pauses. And there's, there's just this moment where you can see her head dip, her eyes drop down, and, like, the sigh comes through. No. There's one thing. She looks up. As we are communicating via Hololith, I cannot provide the requisite big hug to your group. So instead, oh. I give you my, kind of like grits her teeth, my best wishes in accomplishing your mission, knowing that in the future, when we meet in flesh, we will partake in the mandatory big hug ritual. Oh, and then the hollow lift cuts out. What? What's, what's this? What? Can I scholar check to figure out what the fuck the hug yeah, is? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ac excellent. Excellent. I will now go full <laughs> to my, my excellent skills of I put everything in the psychic stuff. And yes, uh, world is did. zero. <laughs> yeah, nice scholarship. Oh, wow. The, um, that's going to be a complication, technically. That will, because of, because of our lovely chat uh, helping us out. Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm I'm going to give you one piece of true information and one piece of false information. Uh, okay. Um, so you would know that uh, the, the big hug ritual is something that is part of all ambassadorial briefings um, and is, is something that is mandated. However... Uh, what you also know is that that mandate comes from uh, the the Codex uh, Familiaris, which is sort of the textbook mm -hmm. of of the of the Officio Ambassadorium. Now, what you also know is that it's said that that order came expressly from a Primarch. In this case, it came expressly from the Primarch Corvus Corax. That's what I thought. <sighs> I believe it. <laughs> also, speaker, fix your uh, mic sensitivity. If you're doing push to talk, just adjust yourself there. You're oh, cutting dear. yourself off. But yes, I I see that. Uh, I don't know who this person is, but I don't know why he would want to hug me or make hug hug protocols. But I'm creeped out. All right, let's uh, let's continue on to the to the thing. Uh, Captain, are we on our way? I suppose there's no time like the present. Let's. Get ready I'm to gonna, find more terrible things. Actually, I want to check up on the uh, on the tribes down below the ship, and I uh, I go to a computer terminal, and I okay. and I access it, and I see they're all saying uh, Corvus hugs. Corvus. Like they're yes. chanting, they're chanting mad. I'm like, oh, the tribes and the debt collector are uh, 
must have got the word about the hugs. Tell me, oh, Captain. Oh, Joy, they're evolving. I have a... Again? I have a... Again. Captain. You know, speak... Yes. Yes, Reed. Uh, begging your pardon, but do you know anything about the climate of this planet? I understand that the worlds of the Imperium are varied, like, extremely varied. Is, please tell me we are going somewhere a bit more tropical. I really wish to have something a bit more close to home for me. Well, it depends on your definition of a tropical paradise. I can tell you that it's possible the planet's atmosphere contains some kind of hallucinogenic agent that affects its denizens in ways unknown to me. But it is equally likely that that same atmosphere contains a exotic species of crop that grows on its own. And apparently they have good cooks, too. Boots, so. uh, you hear Boots slam to attention at the door outside of the, uh, the, the command nest chamber you're in. And you see uh, your, your second in command st- s- sharply standing at attention. Captain Zedek, the shuttle is prepared! Oh, no, it's him again. Oh! Ah. And what is the name of your screaming creature, Zedek? My name is Lieutenant Rhino Ransom! Oh, oh it's Ransom to... again. On the debt collector. Wonderful. Are you here to yell at me again? I'm not here to any yell at anyone except for the captain. And I'm here to let the captain know that the Orvis is prepared to depart. Oh, uh, you can yell at him. I don't care about that. And I'm just going to start, like, hobbling to the fucking lander. Thank you, Ransom. I, as always, appreciate your very... And should you require it, <laughs> he leans in. We can bombard any part of that planet you need. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm presciently aware that we can bomb the planet. That's, as, as always, our last resort. Though, Corporal Ransom, I do have one question. How is that new pilot trainee doing? Oh, well, we have a new servitor installed in the shuttle. The, the pilot trainee is still not quite up to snuff, so instead you'll be using a servitor for this flight. Oh, he's doing well, is he? He hasn't jettisoned mm-hmm. himself out the airlock yet. I mean, what, Capital. what happened to that other one where we tore his spine out looking for batteries? Yes, what that happened to that other one? That one is currently being repaired, so we have a new servitor that has been installed. You'll get to greet that servitor in just a few minutes when you go to the landing bay. Oh, great. Uh, Brain, I do have one request, though. Please don't... Don't mess this with this one this time. I, well, I can't don't hear you. I'm down the hall. You're good. Goodbye. And I'm, like, already heading there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so is everyone uh, basically just, just following now? And yeah, heading towards yeah, yeah. The I'm, I'm, I'm following Brain. Let's go. Reeb's following yeah. behind, trying to think of inoculations he can make for this atmosphere. Bring a rebreather. That's so, all I'm going to say. So because uh, the debt collector is a bit of an older, slightly more run-down vessel, uh, they're... they're doesn't have quite the best of things on it. Um, for example, the only weapons that are really available on here are las guns and auto guns. Uh, and the shuttle bay is currently filled with nothing but Arvis lighters, which are like unarmed ferrying shuttles back and forth. Uh, the, the shuttle you're approaching, Captain Zedek, do you have a name for this particular shuttle that you're you're taking down to the surface? Uh, yes, this one actually belong- was... It came with a shuttle. Uh, this one is called Punitive Damages. Oh, Punitive Damages. Okay, <laughs> ex- excellent. I will I will mark that down. Um, yeah, and you, you approach it, and well. the, the back hatch of it is open. It, as you, you've kind of gone on these shuttles before, you know that they have sort of just this rear hatch that opens up and admits crew in, and everyone sort of sits in, in a back cargo area. Uh, as you come in, you can see that there there is a servitor pilot who is half cradled into the, the pilot seat, clearly attached and not able to move out of it. Greetings. Hi. Hello again, Servitor. What is, what is your designate? My designation is Mystery Gamer 09. What a peculiar name. That's weird. Regardless, I get inside of the the Arvis, strap myself in, and I hold on to like a safety railing, scared for my life. 
Do you have any relation to Mystery Gamer Zero X? He's uh, the a toilet point. inspect. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. I guess. <laughs> Please be seated. The automatic launch systems will be activating shortly. Right, right. This one's very slow. Can you can you modify him to hurry up? Ah, uh, yes. No. I'm <laughs> What's the worst no. that could happen? <laughs> and I'm sorry for saying no. Thank you for your pardon, Brain. I do need to point out, the last time you attempted to modify the servitor, you got a very lovely encoded message from, I would presume to be your hubmate in that regard, the other I, tech I, priest that left you such a rather scathing message. I don't think I, you want that, that again, do you? tech priest thinks that she could look down at me for being a skitari. Well, it's not like we listen to her anyway. Uh, well, we have to, to unfortunately. Point. We cannot turn well, off our ears. Well, I'm sorry for your loss, and I'm gonna start taking out my copy tool and fucking with the servitor. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So this sounds like some kind of tech check. It does sound like a tech yeah. check. That's it does sound like a complication. Yeah, it does. Oh, oh it does. Okay. Oh, no. we, we are spared. We are spared on this one. Yeah, okay, this is this is fair. So there's no complication. Um, I was going to say the difficulty number here was going to be a, a easy three. These aren't, like, high-tech servitors. Uh, what exactly are you trying to change on this servitor? Um, I want to uh, make this... The servitor seems kind of dull and very slow and plodding, so I'm going to uh, turn up the speed, and I'm going to give it access to um, alternative dialects from other worlds, perhaps to spice up its conversation and vocabulary. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Oh, yeah, we're going to go launch real soon. Everyone sit down. We're going to be fighting. Oh, God. Oh, no. You made <laughs> it go too Stop. fast, please. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Having anticipated brain... <laughs> I'm not going to go through all the praise God moves of us to do two fours into the list of things so you got to sit down. Kevin We're going to get going real fast as this ever was. And like, you can hear the engine start to build up as this is, uh, as this shuttle is activating and this thing is just like spewing out text. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like home. Uh, and then, like the, one of the Vox units on on the sidewall crackles into life, and and you can you can hear the the voice of Lieutenant Ransom come through. Uh, we have detected a larger settlement in the southern hemisphere. We will provide you the coordinates so you know where to land. The, the servitor is processing them now, and we'll take you there. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Let's go! I, go, yeah, okay. go! 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 Yeah, and, and and with that, like there, the the, the the servant during all of this is still like, is your number four and and just like has as quickly escalated to a point of just incoherence, um, as as the the shuttle makes its way towards the planet of Fathom Four, which you see is this almost idyllic, like green blue world. Like a like a terra from old days, untainted by any industry, and and you find yourself flying through these these beautiful beautiful white puffy clouds as you enter into the atmosphere. Um, during during the landing process, are any of you doing anything, or are you just kind of all strapped in and just just psyching yourselves up for whatever you're gonna find? I'm using my turns to be scared for my life. Yeah, he's, okay. he's yeah, afraid yeah, yeah. of heights. Uh, is there? Is it possible that while we're flying through the air, I can perhaps do some kind of check to see if there actually are hallucin hallucinogens in the air? Like, we don't, obviously don't have any on board, like, ah, oh, sample the air. It's like, you know, do we have anything like that? I, I'd say you, you'd have, like, some kind of detection tools that you, you might have brought with you. Maybe, like, a, a small medical aspect or something like that. I'll take that up to the to... cockpit and compare and try to compare results to whatever I get off the aspects. Yeah, and as you as you do and you start kind of loading that, the, the servitor's head lifelessly turns to you, its mouth open. It it doesn't look like its jaw moves. It just projects this to you as you're sitting in the cockpit. I pat him softly on his dull gray forehead and I, I turn his head facing back towards forward again. Um, yeah, and, and you you do that. Um, what kind of check do you want to give me for this? Uh, what it be I'll let you do Medicaid or tech. What you, Medicaid, choice. because that's the big check I can do. Yeah, do Medicaid. Yeah, totally. I slam my finger down on the Medicaid button. Yes. 
Ooh, absolutely. Um, Ooh, that's nice. You, you do not detect any kind of foreign substances in the atmosphere that, that would that would be like immediately threatening. In fact, the, the atmosphere here is perfect. Mm. Gentlemen, I like, don't believe there are hallucinogens in the air. Oh. This is garbage. I was looking for a good time. I crossed my arms mad. Do you That's know? a good thing, too. Because we don't have any rebreathers on board. Well, you don't. But do you know that for a fact? Or are you merely hallucinating it? Well, so uh, uh, with that statement, we, we cut away from inside the Arvis lighter. And we, we cut to, much like the, the planet exterior shot, this idyllic scene. We have a blue sky with big puffy clouds in the air, ah. a sun raining down. There's there's sort of hills off in the distance, and you can see these these burrowed like wooden doors and paths that lead out of them. And in front of them, there are all sorts of, of fields that have been just perfectly well tended. And this, you can see figures moving about around this place. Um, and they're, they're, they're very, like, small from where our camera is. Our camera's kind of focused above one of these fields. And then there is this grinding burn sound of... As the Arvis descends on top of a, like, field of crops, burning it entirely and landing in the center of it, creating this just circle of destruction around as it then puts down its landing gears and the, the back door opens. Oh, heavens. That oh, wasn't very smooth. Like home. Ah, I cannot smell anything anymore. Let's go! I pat Servitor on the head and tell him he did a good job. Good boy. And so are you all just I, exiting I the I fade the, the Servitor in an oil can. And like, yeah, you're, you're putting it in its mouth, which is still like... Yeah, just... Dying, <laughs> just, yeah. just expelling words. Like, blah, 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 as you're now filling it with oil. Um... <laughs> Yeah, 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 ab ab absolutely. So you, you do that. Are the rest of you kind of getting ready just to exit the, through the back the back door? I'm tying my shoes. I'm strapping from the cockpit. Getting out of there. What's all this then? You you just hear this this voice shouting, What's all this then? And and you see this this figure approaching. Um, probably I don't know. 20 or 30 meters away coming out of one of the uh, the wooden doors that's in, in the side of the hill and she's got her arms, it's, it's, it's a human human figure, she's got her arms like crossed and she stops again like 30 meters away and she's like pauses and just looks in shock Hello I wave. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> just just like, hi. <laughs> just, 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 we have no idea what it is. <laughs> like, so, so I assume I, I I look around on what we're looking at and uh, assuming that the scene that which we're now set on uh, is this like a pumpkin patch or just like what kind of thing we're looking at? Yeah. So so you're kind of um, right now right now yeah you're 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 looking at some like some some idyllic farmland here. We we're, we're not quite we're not quite um and in another scene yet. But you're you're in like this kind of just idyllic farm. You're in the middle of a field that has just been burned. Probably uh like looking at the the vegetables here. There was some some corn and what looks to be like rows of onions. And as this like. Ugh. As this woman like just stares, you can see she she reaches at her side and just pulls out this um, looks to be a potato and just starts eating it like crunch crunch. Oh, uh, rib, oh, <laughs> rib. I've never seen these types of creatures before, but I think you, a man of uh, inquisitive adeptness, might want to go investigate that. How do you want me to investigate that? I mean, we have determined that Don't she is not... Don't say hi to it. Okay, very good. I will do... I will get right on that. Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me, bye. Sure. Pardon me, bye. Pardon me. That, I, I follow up with Reeb. Okay, so so to, to, to set the scene, like, Reeb, you're you're going well in advance of the, the, the rest of the group, but the rest of the group kind of shuffling behind together towards this this woman who's just exited this, like, door in the side of a, of a hill. Um, and... and 
Reeb, I want you to know that as as you're approaching, you're noticing something. And in like the whole scene, you're you're having one of those realization moments here. Like as as you're approaching, this 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 woman's size is is not is not what mm. you would expect. She seems quite quite small, in fact. Uh Excuse me, um so of my of my knowledge of the Imperium, do I have yes. uh do I have an old copy of White Dwarf in my inventory? <laughs> uh, would you I, would you like to give spend a wrath point to narratively declare that you have an old copy of White Dwarf in your inventory? I would like to I would like to cross reference looking for a certain word, a certain being that would be considered diminutive, perhaps squat, if you will. And also uh, please give me a notepad later so I can choke Alpha to death. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you pull out this copy of White Dwarf, kind of flipping it, holding it like side by side with this this woman on the page, and you're like, no, like this, no, no, this this isn't lining up. And you're you're going through um, another, like you're kind of going through pages of this this like White Dwarf trying to figure figure it, and it's like you know, Homo, homo, uh, homo sapien rotundus. You're like, no, this uh, this I'm, doesn't I'm quite fraud. match. <laughs> Not a crab, uh, not a rat f- person. What is this? You flip the page and you get to Homo sapien minimus and kind of like line it up and you're like, oh yeah, this this lines up real good. Hey, uh, hey Reed, what is the official layman's term of that word? Please uh, align with me, Thurston. Is this a rattling or is this a squat? It is a rattling. <laughs> ah, I, hate to, I hate to break it to you, but we are not dealing with the... Uh, now defunct and permanently annihilated race of beings known as the Squats, as I had once presumed, but in fact, our diminutive friends, the Rattlings. Hello, ma'am! That is a quite a nice-looking root vegetable you'll take. Please, allow me to take a look at that. And we'll just get quieter as I get much... Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 and you, uh... Hey, uh, is this supposed to look like this? Oh, dear. <laughs> yes. Yes. This what? is our background. Why is the sun a rattling? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You, so you approach her as she's like holding on to this potato, and and like she's 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 just in shock. Uh, in fact, uh, Reeb, you're closest. Can you give me an insight check? All right. Let me find that button to check. Yep. I will press the button. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, you're able to tell that this woman is in just complete awe. Um, you, you've heard of this type of effect. Like, this would be the type of effect that humans would have when they might see a member of the Adeptus Astartes. This is, like, pure <laughs> existential dread <laughs> awe as she's looking up at all of you, getting closer and bigger and bigger. And she's just in total shock. And snacking on the potato, like, slowly now, but still snacking on the potato. He's probably thinking to himself, oh, is it my eyebrows? Most people seem to be afraid of that. Is that a problem? Should I shave them? Now it's I'm a great good. look. Brain calls from the back, far away from this small creature. Uh, Reeb knows how to talk to short people, so he's not going to squat down. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to just start off with... Oh, ma'am, we're terribly sorry about your field. Our driver did a great job, but could not avoid causing some minor damage. Are you... Uh, where Where have we landed in reference to, um... Captain? Yeah. yeah. And she's stammering a bit as you turn to Zedek. Uh, like, Zedek, you never got a name for this this place, just that it was, you know, Auspex sweep of the planet revealed that there was, like, a high density of life forms in this southern area. Yes, uh... There, unfortunately, we don't really have a name for what we're looking for. Uh, ma'am, as I start to trot you're, down the path. You're all divinely tall beings. Uh, are I mean, we? I'm tall on my father's side, but... <laughs> are, you, are you here to speak with the mayor? The mayor? I come up and everything like Yes, we would like to speak with your uh, political representative, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just go, go that way. And she sort of points down this, again, super idyllic, like there's birds flying overhead. 
pathway that leads through what you can now tell are a bunch of rattling burrow homes uh, towards this, like, larger settlement in the distance that's just, like, more burrows stacked up on each other on rolling hills. That's happy feasting. That's the, the big town around these parts. Happy ah. feastings. Right. Sounds good. Um, pardon me, um, Thurston, can I please do a... Like, how old is this small rattling? I, I have the book. Can I, like, do a Medicaid check to find out if this is, like, ah, oh, this is an old crone, or this is, like, a small lady, or what is this? You can, you can, yeah, okay, give me a Medicaid check, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I need to figure out, because I, we need a fucking guide. What the fuck are the, why are we, ratlings! Alpha Busa, destroy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, okay, um. You know what? That's that's enough. You can tell that this like this is a woman who's probably in her like late forties, early fifties, but has just worked, um, like ha- has worked on the farm, but not hard. Like this isn't someone who's who's like worked a hard life. It's more that they've been outside in the sun and kind of pruned and and withered. But like this person has like doesn't lift things. They don't do much work. Right. Um. They just exist. Well, not yeah. doing much work means Ridiculous. that they are the perfect guide for us. I'm not going to take someone are, who just got Are off you the going field. to try to, like, converse with this person and convince them to, like, take you to Happy Feast Things? It would be better if we brought someone who is of this place because I believe we've had issue in the past where it's like, ah, yeah, please just show up with your magnificent weirdness, the four weirdos that you are. Just show up out of nowhere. You make I will. Uh, I will happily talk with her and convince her to take us there. All right. I'm yes. And she's still like, like lowered her head down, like not staring directly at you, kind of in reverence. Uh, uh, hello. I, you can. You don't have to not look at us. I don't think I'm that ugly. But would you <laughs> no, be so kind as to take us? You're divinely to... tall, one. You are. Divinely tall. Right. Divinely, she said. And because we're divinely tall, we obviously are here for some divine purpose. Uh, would that not make sense? Yes, yeah, of, co- of course it does. But, but I'm not one to talk, I am. You, know, you want to talk to the mayor. Exactly. You are, you are quite smart. Would you be so kind? Would you do us the honor of guiding us to your mayor? Not yeah, yeah, uh, well, I could maybe. Uh, okay, what kind of skill? Like, are you looking at persuasion here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, g- give me a persuasion check. Totally. Let's see. Uh, let's see if you can convince this person whose name you really haven't got yet to just be your <laughs> guide. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a three. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You can. You can sort of convince. Could could convince this uh, this lady. She's like, hey, yes, yeah, I I can take you. Just just uh. Just, just, just follow me, and she sort of starts taking the lead down the path and and moving towards the settlement. Is it like horrendously slow, and it takes forever for her to go, or having to? Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. like, like what tall people do at cons and have to shuffle forward because no one knows how to walk. Correct. How and much? like <laughs> as this is going on, there's copyrighted music from a certain movie playing as like, <laughs> all, of, all of these like small like like d- diminutive folk peer out from their burrow homes. Uh, some are looking through windows. Everyone is is just in kind of shocked awe at like the four of you walking behind this lady. And eventually, like you find that you're getting into the settlement that is happy feastings which is just a really big hill that has lines of these burrow homes on it Thurston, i want i want to point yes. out if a small if a small hobbit by the name of frillbro browbins comes out and screams grandolf and goes to hug lorne i'm going to uh <laughs> sue you i immediately i immediately pat it away like no get off of me get off of me i hit it with my stick i'm i'm just looking around and i look at Zedek. Captain Zedek. Yes, Brain. Your family has traveled throughout the galaxy for generations and observed the worst and the most glorious the universe has to offer. Am I not incorrect? 
Well, my father had, but he did not prepare me for this wonderful place. And you're, you're carrying on, you're carrying on through this. And as you're, you're carrying on, you're, you're, you're sort of going up these winding paths that lead up the hill at like slight angles. Uh, you can tell that the architecture here is just made for the barest amount of effort. Like, the reason it's taking so long to get anywhere is because these roads are, like, made at the very slightest of inclines not to cause any physical discomfort. And so you could, like, go... You clearly could save a bunch of time just by, like, walking, you know, ho- uh, vertically versus the horizontal crisscross paths you're taking. But but this, this woman, she's leading you through this pathway really slowly and ploddingly. And all the time, she's just reaching in and pulling out, like, a potato and just, just eating it. Like, raw potatoes. Just shoving them in her mouth. As Brain sees this, like, his eyes, like, his visor eyes just tighten out. There's, like, this whirring of, like, audible processing. He reaches out a hand a metallic hand that curls around Zedek's shoulder in clear consternation as he evaluates the settlement. Captain Zedek, there is no grid. These city streets are insane. The strange and- circles that lead in roundabouts. There's not a single smokestack. How There's not a single like 90 this? degree angle. What is this for? Exactly. <laughs> It's remarkably it's idyllic peaceful. for an Imperial. It's green, bro. and I don't like it. Me neither. Oh, we are in agreement. And at that, so there is just this immense belch that echoes <laughs> over the entire side of, of the hill that you've now, like, over the course of maybe two hours, reached the top of. And you see this immaculate uh, hillside burrow home with this lovely, like, a blue painted wooden door and out in front is what looks to be almost like a like a, a stand you would see in like a bazaar um which has this sort of sloped um sloped roof that's just cloth and then a table which is filled with with bread stuffs and like pieces of of like cooked meat that are stacked and the the belch you just heard emits from this uh, blue garbed uh, Homo sapiens minimus that sits behind the table, reaching over and grabbing a full baguette and like crunching half of it into his mouth with this like oh, no, no. by the emperor. And like, <laughs> and and the lady who is like led you here, whose name you still haven't got yet, she sort of like like bows once again and moves to the side and waves <laughs> her hands over, and she's like, this 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 is the uh, this is the ma- the mayor, itch itch mayor Hogpin. You're <laughs> responsible for this. <laughs> and I'm pointing at him. <laughs> You made this place. This lovely, lovely place, Mayor Hogpin. <laughs> Why? Uh, I got the, I got the reeb, and uh, I, I, oh I, yeah, I, I, it's your pleasure. And like this, this rotund fellow hops down, like grabbing a spare baguette in his other hand while he's finishing the first one. Uh, you. You from the capital, are you? Crunch, crunch, crunch. A bit more distant from the capital, but yes, yes, we are. It's uh, a, and he I like, extend my hand to him. And I, yeah, yeah, he finishes scarfing down the first <laughs> baguette and then reaches out this crumb-stained hand up towards you. <laughs> I, I didn't think we'd get any of the big ones here. Just... Just in the capital, they said. And he sort of, like, takes this moment after shaking your hand to, like, wipe the crumbs off of his, like, stained and dirtied blue shirt. Zedek, Zedek, don't, don't touch that hand. I don't know if this game has, like, disease it's checks or late. stuff, it's but I need late. you to not... Da- da- don't touch the Doritos! It's not worth it! That's actually the point of us coming here, Mayor Hogpin. We were oh. looking for more of the tall folk, as you called it, who may have gone missing. 
I'm just I'm audibly choking back revulsion in my voice because my hand just feels so gross. <laughs> that, uh, well, I can I can tell you, Jacquet, the uh, tall ones came here a few months back. Uh, said they're in the capital now, and their days be living gods sent from the emperor himself to to watch over for them. For they were. Um. What is it saying? Captain, you, you look remarkably ill. Is something plaguing you? Do you need a moment? I, I very slowly turn around to Reeb, and I just kind of extend my hand in his direction. Just wiggle my fingers at him, and I turn back around. <laughs> is it like... <laughs> I approach. Is it like, like, a, like a fountain of flakes come off? <laughs> I approach. There's I an approach actual him. particle effect attached to my hand yeah. as it moves. I'm, I'm approaching with a wet wipe. I'm approaching an, with a wet wipe. This is an otherworldly amount of dirty. But it seems that we've um, the the people we've come here to save, or uh, d we should have asked her this. Do we have descriptions of the people we're trying to find? Uh, I, you you got the the basic description that like. One was this, like, ripped guardsman. One was, a like, a servant of the, the Omnisci as an engine seer. Uh, you, you got, like, more classifications. But also you would know yeah. that there won't be many people above, like, two to three feet tall on this planet. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just making sure of everything else. Like, oh, well, that, uh, it, it appears that they have, um, have not actually gone missing, I believe they or something of the sort. Uh, tell me, do you know where they might be? Well, uh, they, uh, they might be in your capital. Uh, uh, and he's, like, finishing now, you realize, is, like, finishing up the second baguette. Uh, and this, like, just this sheen of sweat is growing on his forehead, and he's wiping it off, and, like, it actually flies off the back of his hand onto the ground, and he turns and just starts kind of doing this duck waddle walk back towards his, his food stand where he grabs some of those meat chunks. Uh, well, uh, I mean... Uh, I cannot do this! I'm running up to him. <laughs> I'm grabbing him by his by his horrible bloated throat. Brain, brain, brain. And I'm lifting him against the wall with my Man, power sword. Might, yes. Right You're gonna have to no. make a strength check for that. Do you think he might be quite? Do I heavy. have to make a check, my dear friend? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give give me an intimidation. Check. Wait, does he have to make a strength check to lift? Him? <laughs> Yeah, about to say. No, 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 he does not. I'm, I'm gonna blow uh, it with the permission of the party to glory on this. No, we have three no, glory no, 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 right no, no, now, no. so feel free to spend it all. I, oh, excellent. I'll drop the three glory then. So so remember, hey. you can actually roll it and then apply the glory after two. So just, hey. just, just so you know, but you can obviously apply it all. Uh, so yeah, roll, roll the check. And if okay, you yeah, apply I'll just, three I'll just glory. Apply, yeah, two for right now. Cool. So two extra dice. God. Whenever it feels like loading. Oh, there we go. God! Yeah. Oh, look. Yes. Yeah. A complication. A complication. Blew it. Um, oh, all right. No. Um, all right. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> How you gotta complicate this one? Can it be to the point where he's lifting him? There may have been a nut or something loose in his arm, and the colossal weight of this rattling. He goes, "Oh God! Oh my left arm!" No, no, it's our luck. He's gonna give the poor fucker a heart attack. Yeah. Um. I. Oh gosh. I mean, there's so many or, options here. He that could soil that, himself. He could. Like, that or the mayor just, just passes out. Uh, you know what? All right, all right, all right. You are going to to lift him up and oh, let's see. What's a good? Uh, roll me a d6. Actually. Hell yeah, I would yeah, love roll, to. Yeah, roll me a d6. I'd let's, love nothing let's... more. What do we got there. We got a, a five. Okay, okay. Ah. Um. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you lift him up, but uh, as as was stated, you weren't expecting quite this much bulk, and <laughs> and in your rage, you're not 
you're not like quite you're, you're not quite able to angle your lift so you go to lift and then this sudden like unexpected weight and you you try to like pivot one way but you pivot the other way and instead of like pushing him up against the wall which is probably your intent you actually just drop him on the table of food that causes it to to break and is now like <laughs> surrounded by baguettes and like a pile of meat chunks and he's kind of sobbing and reaches over and is like stuffing some of this food that is on the ground into his face as he's <laughs> I am stomping on his hand no you are not <laughs> and I don't like, I will <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, you 16-piece chicken McNobody. I don't care about your turkey-basting gluttony. I want to know where that goddamn tech priest has gone. And you're going to tell me or by the motive force I'll have you in your entire honest <laughs> community of Luddite electrolysts purged from memory. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, he's like spewing food out of his mouth as you. <laughs> Can I roll to five check the hell out of brain? <laughs> Um, I want to vibe Can everyone check who brain. is not pie brain give me give me a actually no one sec. I have to to roll a check here. Uh, oh no. Which I think is like an immediate complication for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think my first check is Yeah, oh, you got a shame. complication. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to see if chat it succeeds. Curse that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. I'm just rolling these dice. Okay, so I would get one success. Okay. So so as this is all going on, like the those of you who are not pie brain uh, and involved in this sort of turn around and see um, see this absolutely like diminutive form. We're talking like smaller than Hogpin, smaller than Prudence. This this younger ratling who's sitting like standing there, just mouth completely agape at what they're seeing, <sighs> and like clearly breathing like heavily having just exerted themselves <gasps> oh hi and I wave like nothing's going on <laughs> I, um, I assume a crowd has formed at this point uh, what are you like doing they're, to our they're mayor? starting they're starting to but like the the, the the child is here first and like the the farmer lady who is here is kind of like backed off and is sobbing against the size of side of the uh, the burrow home and and mayor hugpin's like sobs are just echoing down the mountainside now <laughs> <laughs> as as occasionally it's broken up by him still trying to like reach out with his still good hand to grab more food um and and like yeah this this child just looks he's like I used, I used your vine once. Yeah, uh, look, Captain Zedek. Yes, we are the. This is merely, merely a game that we play in in oh, the Officio Basadorium. <laughs> this is just a greeting we do to test people's we... metal. Persuasion uh, check, please. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, now I'm panicking. <laughs> oh. I was waiting for it to be a complication. I was oh, going to be yeah, so it's, happy. It's just he's, as bad. He's just like he's just kind of uh, 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 and like looking at Mayor Hawkins, uh, looking up at all of you, looking. <laughs> is there is there a way in which See, I can he's... assist him <laughs> uh, with my zero well. persuasion? <laughs> Do you like you could you could roll your one fellowship dice if you want? Oh yeah, no. my no. my yeah. one thing. I yeah. come in and be like, listen here, nerds. Yeah. I crit both. No. No. Listen here, no. you small you small drunk bits. We are here to find your divine ones, and I demand you bring them to us. Uh, they're in the they're in the the, ca the capital. Yeah. Where in the capital? Just, just the, they're in the in the in the capital in the in the, the equator. Uh, but that's that's not why I'm here. I'm, I, we we need help. 
Help with you what? Need help with. Can I go pull brain off the mayor, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like we Reeb, need help, please. and that's Reeb's just like you thing two to have like just ignored brain <laughs> manhandling the mayor this whole time. You're just like, ah, oh, well, I guess we need to we need to threaten this small child. Reeb's <laughs> over here like this is now. I'm paying attention to to brain. Brain is about to. He looks like he's about to s- strangulate him. Brain at this point has forgotten that he was beating up the mayor, and it's just kind of been distracted by Lauren. I yank him directly in the direction of the rest of us, so he is away yeah, from and, the mayor. Yeah, and like the mayor is still using his one good good arm, still sobbing, picking up the food off the floor and like shoving it in his face. Uh, but the but the, yeah, the child as you're like pulled over, uh, like looks up at Lauren, like seeing some kind of compassionate soul, and just it, it there's. It, as a, as a joins a transpiring at the Grumble Tum Tum Farm. <laughs> the, the, the fucking what? This hurts my, me. <laughs> my instinct tells me to harm the child, but in my heart of hearts, I know I should not do DM, that. DM, should I take one point I, of shot I, for that? I, <laughs> I, I, I come down to the one who dared speak those fucking words at me. I kneel down because I don't care about the respect of these things. And I, and I look at him and my eyes. My eyes are glowing with psychic energy. And I go, the fuck did you just say? God damn it. Um, <laughs> to, to, to grumble Tom Tom Fum. The fucking... <laughs> Grumble, Tom, fucking Tom Farm. Captain Zach would like to lean in. Put his, a gentle. I put a hand put back to Zach. No, you, 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 you just fucking wait. I got a moment here. No, you <laughs> don't. So, I know so you so have you, a moment. To, That's what worries to, me. To, to, and he's like, he's kind of getting, getting a bit like, uh, like, like a bit like worried. He's like, to, to crumble Tom Tom Farm. Uh, uh, Uncle Hedge Hedge is going to be having his barbecue. Fucking what? I'm going to intercede. I need to, re- please let me straighten him up so we can talk to the small child. Respect. And, and like, you just hear the mayor again, Hogpin, who's like still weeping in the corner. like, oh, oh no, 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 Hedge. Hedge, he's 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 the best barbecue chef in the southern hemisphere. He is. <laughs> I don't care about the bar. Wait, Lauren, Lauren, points, chef, points. I look back at him. I grab him by the shoulder. It's you points. tell me where this cook is right now. I want my points. <laughs> Lauren, stop shaking the child. <laughs> you stop. Lauren, speak I with the lab. The baby. Respect. I violently Stand shake the rattling baby. <laughs> yeah, I wish okay. to straighten uh, Lauren. Uh, has, has, yeah, Uncle Hedge, Hedge, is this a grumble top top form? Is this a problem? Has, has, they, 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 they shot a, a Geraldine. A Geraldine was coming. I, 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 during this moment, I want to spin a wrath because I'm an old man. I'll break my arms. To, yeah. to, to influence the story to where I'm shaking this rattling thing and I'm bringing it up going like point me to the direction of where this thing is I need a cook to win <laughs> and, I, and I'm lifting <laughs> this heavy child thing up so you tell me where it is now <laughs> yeah 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 so so I, I, I think like, like and, and any of you can step in and stop this from being the narrative direction we're going. But I'm just going to say by spending that wrath point, what you're going to do is you're effectively going to use this child like an object. Like, holding him up with your strength of one, but still, like, divinely inspired because you spent that wrath point. Mm-hmm. So essentially, like, hold the child up in front of you and use him as your, like, guide. Uh, Actually, to, to I'm holding him forward going, you keep pointing where we're going. <laughs> I, I yeah. begin to walk. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, um, yeah, you you see that, um, that like the, this, this child is, is like just pointing and you start making your way. Are the rest of you going to, to follow Lauren and the child compass? Kind of have to. Z- Zorin has blown a full wrath on this. <laughs> Zorin, Zorin, Zorin and Brain combined have caused more havoc in five seconds than in any of the previous games we have attempted here. I kind of have to go with it. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's lovely. And like as Reeb, as Reeb is having this, 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 like just like mental moment of standing there as the other three are all running off. They're like the sobbing mayors. They're like, would, would you like go back at? Yes. Can, I medicate, can I medicate a fix this broken? I, I, you're you're I, away I stop, from here. Wait, wait, wait. Is this the child offering? 
Don't no, 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 no. There's just okay. Reeb alone with the mayor. Okay, the mayor's oh, yeah. like sorry, I'm sobbing. <laughs> yeah, and the, like the, as the mayor's sobbing, he's just like, would you like a baguette? I, um, I would like to I'm, go back over to the mayor as well, because I'm just, I'm gobsmacked. I'm, I'm kind of rub. Reeb is like smiling, but he's wiping his hand down his face. I would love that. May I please take a look at your hand? I wish to fix the mayor's hand. Oh, yeah, give me, totally, give me a Medicaid check on that. Please don't. Please don't complicate. Please complicate this. Please complicate this. Please complicate this. I like how we're praying for. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately no, not. you like, like you, you, you have all of the necessary medicinals just to to make it work. And it's just like in in again complete. I undislocate his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took who, and he sort of like falls onto his butt and is like in a pile of his own like food filth that he's still snacking from, <sighs> um, and as like. Eventually, you two, like, make the way to, to follow uh, Pie Brain and Lorne, who are rushing off into the, uh, into the like, idyllic, you know, noon sun. <laughs> the meadows. Uh, um, the, the other, like, Rattlings are all just, like, staring at you in awe, Reeb, like you've performed some kind of divine miracle. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just undislocated his elbow. It's fine. I'm not God. You, you know, Hela. now that they've the crowd is gathered. Hela, it's a Hela. <laughs> oh, well, I seem to be um, gathering a little bit of a following. I'm going to look carefully over my shoulder at the at the rattlings, and then back to Captain. Are they Zedek. all like in a circle going? Hela. It's it's more like they're they've kind of like formed like a procession down the road. Oh, so <laughs> they're, they're all together. Like, Hela, Hela, <laughs> and they're all just chanting and pointing on Hela. <laughs> yeah, and like like as you're trying to to follow up, like after your running compatriots, like eventually one of these like rattlings rushes out. Like, I got this bad wart on my back, and A I wart? just can't. <laughs> I, yeah. Reeb claps Could his hands together. It? Reeb is clapping his hands together, like as I just did. Captain, good luck with the barbecue. I have some, t- I have some talent to show these people. Give me a moment, please. <laughs> oh God. What would you say the wart is? The wart sebaceous or has it expired yet? Has it burst open? Please take me into your hovel right now. I begin brandishing my surgical tools. Ex- excellent. Are you excellent. like Edward Scissor's hand at this point? Just shing! There's like fans of cutting knives and syringes. Hey, this is as close as I'm going to get to doing uh, any sort of medicinal work on these non-human beings. So, yeah. Just ab-human. I, I, ab-human. I, Excuse I, me, I come sorry. back with my rattling compass so not to split the party, and I'm just standing there in front of the hovel awkwardly, and I assume the child's just kind of calmed down, just waiting. But any it's struggle blowing. from it, I kind of shake a little bit going... There's no escape. You're glowing like here. a golden compass. We go. We go. We should go to the Grumble Tom Tom Farm. <laughs> if you fucking say those words again, I will make sure your legs don't work anymore, child. Do you understand me? Lauren, please stop threatening Lauren. the child with dismemberment and breaking. This child is threatening my fucking like shock values on my L- character Lauren. sheet. I will not allow this to L- go further down. Lauren. Your will yes. is that which can move mountains and mount movements. But this is a child. Do you know what that means? It's stupid. And I think that it could learn. <laughs> child, it is no longer the brumbly gumbly gumbly t- t- farm. It is now meat place. Alpha. You will henceforth <laughs> refer to it as meat place. Alpha. If you do this, and I grab him by his like face, like squeezing his cheeks and his and his chin, I I think this is really calming. It's probably not. You <laughs> will be like me. Could you, could you like when you get real close? Is your eye like super yeah, like yeah. the shutters are super wide and yeah. super bright? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Reeb, can you give me a um? Oh, can you give me one more Medicaid check to represent your your saintly healing? On I eviscerate people? the shit out of that wart. 
Oh, yeah, you do. You do. Uh, and you, like, you perform all of these, like, minor miracles being stopped essentially every ten minutes along the, the downward path. Um, <laughs> with with Lorne still, like, holding on to this child, basically, like, you're not going anywhere. You're our compass now. Um <laughs> And yeah, so so after a while, you, you manage to to get like the the utter like adoration and attention from people, and with that, you finally manage to to kind of undo some of the negative will that might have been done by others in your companionship. Oh, no. And, um, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent a rat. There's no negative to it. <laughs> Can I? And then um, then you um, you you eventually. Having having done that, can can make your way to the Grumble Tum Tum Farm. Uh, um, son of a bitch. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> it's not called that. Uh, I was I was simply narrating as the game master. I was not playing as the child in that. I was simply oh, oh no, I, I was referring to you scene. as the game master. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we're referring to you. The fix your uh, shit, gentlemen. I understand <laughs> that we are doing things on a very strict time scale. Please, if you would, please look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so you, you, you make your way uh, towards the the farm. Um, and it's about a half hour away from Happy Feastings once you've made your roughly two hour descent from the like winding streets and performing Reeb's miracles throughout the town. Uh, the farm the farm lot itself is like a group of structures that are just assembled together it looks like uh three buildings that are sort of placed placed right around each other with some you know slightly raised small stone walls which to you you could easily step over uh and then some 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 farming fields all around as as you start approaching though there's a smell on the air uh of like just like cooked meat and you can see this small waft of fog coming from the uh, the center of the, the the outcropping of buildings ah finally civilization how much longer till meat place alpha child Where's, where's, where's real close look look uncle hedge hedge is starting to barbecue Oh, good, Uncle Hedgehead is doing a barbecue. That giant head better not be Uncle Hedgehead or I'm gonna shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I come to Reeb and I, look, Reeb, we get to get our bonus points. You Once we find this barbecue chef and see and taste the quality of his food, we'll get bonus points and we'll be winners. I sincerely look forward to it, but I believe you could have done it with a little bit less trauma, Lorne. Oh, we're not going to be. They're not going to remember us. It's not like the big monuments or tapestries of this horde of imps. And I continue with so, my from experience. I think this yeah. child will remember Lorne. I'm pretty sure he will. Don't I stop. I, I stop and I look at Captain Zedek and say, "At what point do you think this child will remember?" Well, does mine wipe it? And I continue. <laughs> <laughs> I t I turn to Reeb and I, I just. I look at him with the incredulity and say, in a matter of less than an hour, we have gone from dignitaries to terrorists to possibly both. I'm You're terrified welcome. for the outcome of this Uncle Hedge Hedge. Well, as long as we don't kill him, we should be good. So you finally you finally reach the, the, the farm location, and there's there's various ratlings who, who pretty much are, like, lazing about. Two of them are just sort of leaning on the stone wall that, like, allows entry towards the, the three central structures. Uh, several more are milling about uh, in the center, almost like not quite a courtyard, but the, just the central space between the three buildings. There's this immense stone barbecue that has been set up here that behind which is is a character who looks up as you cross through the fence and like the the small uh, rattling compass child that Lauren is carrying points is like, look, look, it's Uncle Hedge Hedge, um, and we'll just uh, we'll just share some art with our players here. Oh boy, let's see. I'm excited. Ah. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Garrett oh. drew this one. He did an awesome job. Yes, I love Garrett. <laughs> Garrett's great. Yeah, yeah, and and so so he just kind of looks up. Well, well, just snacking on like some some sausages that he's just 
plucking off of the grill with super calloused like hands like just grabs it off and bites in juices going down his mouth looks up cocks his head to the side you are uncle hedge hedge right that's right i'm uncle hedge hedge Oh no, a it can't speak to right. Uh, Reb, <laughs> it, it can't speak correctly. I, 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 oh, I don't I need this speak anymore. Ones. Wait, like, just drop the child. No, 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 no. The child cannot remember. I need to fix this problem <laughs> later. So we'll continue for now. Okay, so wait, wait. To clarify, are you still holding on to the child? I, I put the child down and I look at the child and I go, stay near me for now. The child nods. <laughs> I will advance to Uncle Hedge Hedge and uh, attempt to cure his lumbago, I guess. Yeah, uh, you, you start, like, walking forward, and he's just grabbing more sausages off of the grill straight while also throwing more meat on. You can also see that there's just, like, rattlings mulling about here that are clearly just walking up and taking stuff off of the grill and just eating it. And, yeah, Hedge Hedge just looks up with his, like, little chef's hat and his, uh, kiss-the-cook-stained, uh, schmuck. Are you here to help with the Geraldine problem? <laughs> yes, what manner of affliction is this Geraldine? Is it, free? is it anywhere in your temples? Is it in your hands, your thumbs, your feet, your toes, your kidneys? Especially your kidneys. Kidneys, any sort of... Geraldine in your kidneys could be quite bad. No, 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 no. It, it's, it's, it's a Geraldine. We saw one on the property earlier. A ge What? Mm. Don't worry Be about it. Keep going. Begging your pardon, oh, small cook. What is a Geraldine? Since it does not appear to be a disease. It, it's, it's a, it's a people eater. Hmm. Well, then. Got any people around here? And, like, as as you're having this discussion, you just hear, like, south, just this, this shout out from one of the, from, from one of the rattlings that was stationed near the, the entrance, and you just hear this, Oh, oh no! G Geraldines! Geraldines and Geraldinelets! Go and look at whatever he, this man is screaming about, and you 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 see one of the the rattlings pointing over the fence across the fence that's like across the street, and that's when you see this immense creature that bursts out of the ground like a burrowing animal, and you see it here. We'll just share it. Oh my god! Oh, and it bursts <laughs> yeah. out with these like horns and like tusks and then horns under its ears and then these smaller ones burst out alongside it these these maybe like the size of the the rattlings well this one is immense this one's like someone took took maybe an ogre and a half and put it down forward um and this furred monstrosity lets out this <laughs> As it pops out of the ground, uh, and um, we're gonna we're gonna quickly change up the map here. Ah, uh, hey, hey Thurston, real quick, can I spend another wrath to consult our ever useful white dwarf handbook? Uh, you you absolutely <laughs> can can spend a wrath point to consult the white dwarf. Okay, um, I would like to do so because I would like to see if this is somewhere in there as well. Is is the is the White Dwarf magazine going to be our 40k guide to the galaxy? It's uh, Reeves' absolutely. guide to the galaxy. Thank you very much. He got it for free from the Inquisitor he's working under. Yeah, she bought uh, it. Yeah, for you him. you spend uh, you like flip through the pages of White Dwarf to try to determine what a Geraldine is, and the Geraldine must be some kind of like horrible apocrypha fan fiction thing because oh. it has not appeared in mm. the annals of White Dwarf. Seems to be like a HUD, but not quite. Oh, well, lads, arms up! Now, quick heads up, many of you uh, might be 
tabletop role-playing fans. How combat works in Wrath and Glory is pretty freeform in that always starts with the players, and the players get to pick who they want to go first. And then it's kind of a back and forth between the players and the GM on what activates. So as we start this encounter, there isn't really like a surprise moment because everyone was kind of alerted. Um, I'm going to pass it over to our players to decide who they want to activate first. Okay, um, so I did have a question. Does anyone intend on like rushing into melee with these guys? Because I no. feel like we have a little bit to shoot at them. All right. I so look at, I look, I look at him like, no. <laughs> I will die as soon as wind touches me. So it's uh so this is what I propose. Yeah. I propose Reeb go first to walk up and shoot. Then I'll go then I can go next and do some psychic powers. And then brain can move and then brain yeah. can move up because by that point they probably already advanced and so you can try to get yeah. a quick well, kill yeah. in when and I then was... Zedek's last to finish people off. Oh, that's actually very true. Okay, yeah, I think that's valid. So let us kill I mean uh, hey, the everyone good side. for that? Yeah. Sounds good. Excellent. All right. So, Reed, yes. you're going, yeah. man. Take us away. Uh, great. Uh, so, my speed is six. It's a full to move. Let's see how many squares. <laughs> all the way in that direction. All the way there. Oh, there. Can yeah, I move past totally him? Totally move there and get behind cover. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, cover from their deadly ranged attacks. <laughs> hey. You never know. Uh, and I don't think I can hit with them in that range. No, I cannot. Far. Yeah, so you can I always think, try. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's with, it's kind of within range. I'll go for it. So what are you what are you going with? Oh, of course, I'm going to pull out my flamer and I'm going to attempt to assist the barbecue man in making barbecue. Except it'll be very fast and very burnt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so flame weapons Attempt. are um, they, they they've got some some unique rules in this game. Uh, which we're using a variant of just to make sure that they work for this. So um, you can hit a number of targets up to your ballistic skill, which is what currently? My ballistic skill is three. Okay, so you can nominate any three of these uh, creatures because they're all within the, uh, the 12-inch max range of your weapon. I will, I will activate uh, these three as fire okay. candidates. Perfect, and then you just, you just make an attack roll and we see... What happens versus their defense? All right. Uh, no bonus, no penalty? Uh, no bonus, um, no penalty, because they're they're all in medium range for you. Yes, and they're all standing still. Perfect. They want to eat. They want to become barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. As soon as it'll load. Price oh! on a bite. And it's a, and it's a complication. Uh, it's a success, so but a complication. Gonna <laughs> you're going to hit them. Um, but in hitting them, you're also going to have a complication. Oh no! I hit the so, fuel tank. Oh shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so let's let's find out what uh, what happens here with the uh, the complication first of all, because yeah, could you roll me two d six? Boy, oh boy, Reeb. All right. No, not one d six. The old complication chart, because in combat Slap. you use special complications. I rolled minimum and maximum. Okay, perfect. So, so that would come out as a sixteen, which a sixteen on the combat complications is you run out of ammo. Spectacular. So. You you just let the entire tank rip on these uh, these creatures, and it just like blasts out flame. So you can um, your damage on this is going to be ten plus one. So you can give me a damage roll. Uh, dice bonus. Uh, bonus no dice bonus. bonus. No damage. dice bonus on this. So oh, we do have damage. we do have six glory to spend if you want to spend That's that true. all that glory on it. Oh wow, oh. we have six glory. Hey, because yeah. I want to make I want to make some. Listen, you dumped you dumped my fuel tank, so I'll tell you what, I will dump the wrath pool. Or the glory? The glory. Yeah, glory pool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How many how many glory are you gonna put into this? Uh throw me give me four. Nice. I'm fine with Sweet. Yeah, four. So, it is. Yeah, throw four, four bonus dice on this. Four BD. Bonus dice. Right. Four, and I get one bonus damage mod for the uh, no, no. No, no bonus. Okay, good. No no bonus damage mod. I I pressed the boot. Uh <sighs> terrific. Uh, yeah, so all of those those bonus dice do nothing, uh, but you do do uh, eleven damage. It doesn't look like it even rolled them. Uh, it's, it's true. It's true. It's true. But uh, your your damage is is pretty reasonable. Um, you end up torching the two in front immediately. Um, just bleh, gone. 
Uh, with that being said, however, the other one, I am going to spend one of my rune points. If you could please mark me down a rune point. Uh, I'm going to spend it to have the Geraldine make what's called a determination check. So the Geraldine was going to take three damage from that, three wounds from that, I should say. I'm going to roll determination, which is a thing I can roll that essentially lets me stop that. Or reduce it, I should say. Um, and Geraldine reduces that by two, so it takes two shock and only one. Cool. Um, and yeah, and I believe is also on fire. <laughs> so that's a thing, um, which I'll mark off here. Because, you know, making me on fire is, is kind of jerkish, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Postal. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. So the first two, you just go up behind there. You unload with uh, your flamer. It clicks empty as you just burst through the tank. The first two let out this, like, screech, this... Now, I'm gonna give a bit behind the scenes. Now, you can tell that the death of these smaller ones triggers some kind of effect on the big creature. Um, and this is a special rule called, that I have for the Geraldine called Oh No My Babies. Um, and you can tell that the Geraldine is none too happy that two of its uh, offspring have, have been torched in front of it. Hi! And with that... Did you drink my Prometheum again? I only had a little! Why did I expend my entire tank in one gap? This is your fault again. It's alright. We'll talk later. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going I'm going to, to activate here because... Yeah, Yeah, because it's... And so for people to know for the initiative, it's basically we go and then enemy, we go, then enemy. And uh, and also just sort of preface things, for people who are still uh, donating to people to wrath points and stuff when they already have full, once they're cat, we can't give them anymore. So I'll yeah. just take someone who donated, give it over to Reeb. So Reeb, you have one wrath point now. Yay! Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate with the, the Geraldine Lit here, and that, that little, little buddy's going to move and go. Does he make noises as he comes? Like, meh. So he sort of like skink, like scampers on on all four and goes, nah, 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 and get gets to the center of the street and looks up at Reeb. And though, as though punishing Reeb for for, for prior statements, like Reeb, like wrecks back his head and then goes forward and this just spew of like Ugh. green acidic substance flies out. I am in cover. Ha ha. You are in cover. Um, oh, and I roll a zero to hit you. So so this acid just hits the wall and splatters and goes... <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, passing it back to the players. Actually, so it's my turn now. And you know what happened? Apparently the warp itself is against me. So no matter what I do, I'm going to have to roll Perils of the Warp. Because it's going to be a complication. Yes, <laughs> So I'm going huh. to move forward. And right. uh, I'm going to trust in my compatriots to defend me. I'm going to look at... Uh, you know what, Brain, I'm going to trust that you could take care of the big one. Good, yeah. so I'm going to be here in case I need to be in cover for things. I'm going to look at the little one, and I'm going to use a psychic power called Crash. Uh, crunch. Okay. Oh, and so good. basically, nice. so everyone knows. Which one are so you using? On, You're using this on the little one? Uh, on the little one. Yeah. So okay. basically, like, it's probably going to kill immediately, but... They donated it to complication. So Thurston, could you roll yes. the perils of the warp for me? I like that you're. Why are you making me roll it? Why aren't you rolling it? I want you to be. Oh, the oh, one oh to, sorry, yeah. sorry. I do need it. So it's two d six. So one, two. Yeah. Thurston, we so know I you derive sixty one from this. Sixty one, you're saying? I, I was meaning for you to read it for me. Yes, 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 yes. Sixty one. The veil thins. Uh, the air uh. within. 25 meters of you thins, causing living creatures to suffer shortness of breath and dizziness. Uh, all creatures are hindered too. In addition, one wrath dice must be added to all your psychic tests for the remainder of this scene. Ooh, so basically, nice. you have like an even like bigger chance of... Uh, yeah, yeah, a bigger chance of just like causing more perils as you summon all this warp energy. And um, hindered for the rest of you is... Uh, essentially plus one to all the difficulty on every test you have. And that's going to apply to everyone. 
Uh. DM, I raise my hand. Yes. So this hindrance comes in the form of the shortness of breath, is that correct? It is magical warp shortness of breath. I suppose I don't you have breathe. artificial breathing, so you're fine. <laughs> ah! Oh, joy. Always bet on brain, baby. All right. That's, um, that's why and... people probably want me to complicate things. So I assume that thing's defense is, like, pretty low. So I want to uh, upgrade the two uh, yeah. sixes I have there to be, yeah. for my additional thing, which is a plus one damage difficulty at the strength and willpower test, because Crush, cool. basically, to describe the psychic power test for people, I reach out and I grasp my hand and whatever my target is, or multiple targets, I basically grab it and, like, constrain it with psychic power so it can't move or do anything else. So I, you will not move, and I'm, like, constricting it with great power and it does 10 plus one additional damage die and additional damage die does activate so i do 11 damage total to it yeah 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 um and that is way more than enough uh to kill this poor thing you just you like wring its neck psychically and toss it to the side and it falls down and and you just hear this this immense roar from the flaming geraldine in the background <laughs> um <laughs> Lauren, why'd you make That's a meatball? A, yeah. Why'd you make a it, meatball? It's just like a little circle of meat now, just in his just splats <laughs> onto the road. Yeah. <laughs> meatball. All right, so now um, that thing goes. It does go. It does go. Uh, so the Geraldine will go, and the Geraldine will move. Let's see. Moved up menacingly, it go moves nah, there. Nah. Moves there. It, it kind of like like starts like bounding forward and stops in front of the uh, the, the wall there. And Reeve, you see this, and it it sort of like looks at you and takes a backswing with its mouth and comes in and tries to bite you. Um, now I'm suffering a ooh, a minus two penalty here that I'm just going to uh, to have to apply manually somehow. So. Or just adjust it on the fly. Mentally, mental math. Yeah, yeah, I'll do some mental math. Mental math. Um, as I roll my attack, and... What's your defense, Reeb? My defense is not terribly high, I don't think. It's two. Is a two. two. I have to scan across my whole sheet, so it takes a second. Because uh -huh. I yeah, should be in your combat the last, section. The last two non wrath, which would be a two and a one, so those would be ignored. So I'm going to get a two. But I think you also have you have the cover there, so you're going to be fine against this attack. So it kind of comes in and is sluggish from being out of breath. and <sighs> It also has to make um, an athletics test, which is really going to suck for it because... Um, it's also at a minus two penalty, so let's see how this goes. Uh, it's still on fire. Lauren, will you roll me a d3? I sure can. Yeah. I don't, but it's not a thing, so... Slash roll on d3. Boop! There you are. Yeah, so... It activates. So, uh, I believe yeah, in it. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll go. Okay, cool. Uh, and yeah, you can see the fire is like melting and crisping its skin and it roars. And, like, um, and yeah, so the, the, the Geraldine is in the center of the, the, the road here on fire and like attempting to bite it, Reed, but failing terribly as it's on you know fire and pain. Uh, all right, back to the players. So uh, I think yeah. I will go and I'm going to okay. look down at this child and I'm going to grab him, and I'm going to say, Now look here, young man. This is the power of the Omnissiah. The safest place is with him. I'm going to put him on my shoulders, and I'm going to charge the Geraldine. <laughs> Ab absolutely. By the motive force for Lemuria. And I'm going to charge and all-out attack. Sure. And so, taking my crackling power sword out as my servos crash under the grass underfoot, throwing plumes of dust as I advance, uh, I'm going to begin calculating up what I'm getting here. I should be getting um, plus one uh, for the attack. Uh, yep. Okay. And I'm also getting plus one to complicate. What's up? <laughs> You're going to complicate the hell out of this, I hope you know. I sure you fucking are. hope I am. All right. Let's swing our power sword. Wobomp. Okay, uh, that um, is going well, to get a wrath. Yeah, do that reroll. <laughs> do that reroll. 
That's, uh, that's not, yep. that's not so, a great So how Wrath points oh, work, everybody, yeah, is that go. basically, um, so everyone knows how the game works. He's already 16 on two dice, so with a Wrath point, he uses that to take all those failed dice and then re-roll them again, and that is just an addition what he made. So he basically, he has two sixes, which means plus two to result, and then normal successes, which are fours or higher. So he has three hoorays and then two, like, mega hoorays. So he gets a total of seven. Cool. Yes. So I'm going to ship those two exalted dice over, uh, two bonus mm -hmm. damage, and then uh, I'm going to get two for an all-out attack, and then I'm going yep. to drop our two glory into this as well. Oh wow! You are just going all in. Okay. I sure am. I'm fine with him spending the glory. Yes. Yes. Uh, Do it up. All right. So just bringing this sword down for I think it's dead. points of damage. <laughs> Uh, yeah, points. so so you you like bring this down towards the Geraldine's skull, shouting out praise for Forge World Lemuria, and you go down, but the powers of chaos are fickle. Uh, sorry, will you take a rune dice off for me there? Sure can. I'm going to you, spend you have four left. Rune? Yeah, I'm going to spend a rune point here to have the Geraldine survive on one wound. <gasps> <laughs> as you you just miss whatever its brain stem is whatever like central thing and then you pull the blade back out and it looks up and just turns so for those of you who uh, want a bit of explanation i can spend rune points anytime the players would kill an enemy and basically say nah they live with one wound so yeah the geraldine kind of still on fire by the way just looks at you and um, now that would be the end of the player action. I have uh, my action, and um, all of the things that have acted for me have acted. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going I mean, to. Zedek still got a turn. He does, it's but good. what I mean is I'm going to have um, I'm going to have a little little Geraldine let uh -oh. up out of the ground right there. You have a second one under us if you want that there too. Uh, yeah, sorry. Should not be. There you go. Cool. So yeah, this Geraldine like, pops out of the like a burrow in the ground and looks around. Uh, I'm intimidated by its teeth. Zedek. Um, Zedek, I'm going to give you a free action at the start of your turn. Can you give me an insight check, please? Absolutely. If my large, giant hands could click any faster, I would. Yeah. We believe in you. Go. Oh, Go forth and roll oh, as it takes roll. forever for the thing. Seven total 20, 20 work. There we go. Oh, oh okay. it's a complication. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so um, since this is a free action, I'm not going to use it to be, like, incredibly punishing. Uh, but what I'm going to say is you, you do succeed on your insight check. You know, like, you can tell all of these rattlings sitting around, like, they just need someone to rustle them up and like get them going because you see they have slings they have farmer tools like uncle hedge hedge has like a whole bunch of implements they're all like just kind of standing around not doing anything yet but you could you could easily easily muster them up now the complication is they seem to just be like way more indolent than usual even in the face of this like kind of like uh looks like someone's dealing with the threat so we don't have to but you could tell you might be able to press them into action you know what i think that's exactly what captain zedek's going to do yeah uh, so I'd that would be a to... leadership test as as an action oh, you absolutely. could also combine it with another action if you want to do something else it just increases the difficulty by two which may be really bad because you're also out of breath and everything is difficulty too higher so <laughs> So choking on the air at the moment, I'm going to stand up straight, look at this clearly handled situation ahead of me. Hey, peanut up gallery! I know you're standing around waiting for the barbecue to be done, but there's work to be done too. Why not add another piece of meat to the fire and... Oh god. Just, just, just hit that one. I'll make a leadership test for that. Yeah, give me a leadership test on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you can tell that they all kind of look up like... And even he Uncle Hedgehog, he's like, well, I suppose we could, uh, you wish, have. And as if you as kill it, you can eat it. Um, you also, uh, as like a player option, Captain Zedek, 
you can at this point now that you've successfully motivated them you can spend a wrath point of yours to trigger uncle hedge hedge's uh unique combat ability which i'm just going to tell you the name of it's called soups on <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't have to say anything more i would love to spend a wrath dice to uh, activate the uncle hedge hedge feature yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like, do, like in your motivation, you you put like this, like even though you're gasping for air, as are all the other ratlings, and then then just like Hedge Hedge starts madly grabbing more meat and like, shoot, strong boy, and everyone's kind of like, ah, and they're picking up farmer implements and like basically spending the rest of their action getting ready for some kind of combat. Um, yeah, and you still have a movement if you want to move around, Captain Zedek. Yeah, I will. Move another couple spaces over that way. And cool. Move just hi, Zadik. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. I man, did it get hotter here or something? I can't. I made chaos farts. My bad. Oh. <laughs> so everyone's choking on it. That brings us to our next turn. And um, I'm a bad, bad person. So I'm gonna spend another rune point at the start here. To uh, seize the initiative. Hold on. I have don't an objection have any... to that. Why? Do you have any glory? Ah, uh, there is one no, person who hasn't moved. The child. Who has... Oh, what? <laughs> the child. All right, all right. You're going to hand the child <laughs> your is, power sword? Go and give is, it a good swing there, there is, kid. There is one hit point left on this monster. The child has yet to prove himself before the Omnisire. He might have a chance to act. All right. All right. Um, I'm, you're going to have to spend a wrath point for that narrative That is a-okay of, with me. Of, of the <laughs> child. Uh, I'm going to use the, the rattling farmer tools with a severe, like, penalty here because reasons um uh, and we'll see we'll see we'll see how this goes we'll see i if, I, w- if... I am willing to give him my gun um just let the wait 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 sorry 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 you're going to give him your gun your radioactive gun it's only a little cancer <laughs> <laughs> Can I, can, I, can I use my one veto? I don't want to but come on. <laughs> Please do not cook the tater tot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Um, so he's First. not using your cancer okay, gun. Okay, fine. Look, I won't give the child make... cancer in the funny RPG. <laughs> 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 Jack, can we all agree that it's it's perfect? <laughs> Never mind, we can't. We can't. Everybody gets one veto. Everybody Blade gets one veto. about it and then doesn't. <laughs> and then the child misses. <laughs> <laughs> like the child's so like, distracted because he's clearly got this like weapon he's trying to hit the children and you're like oh here take this it's like candy with the radium pistol and he's like I wish what? Okay. I have a question yes, can I yes. can I spend a, can I spend my own wrath to try to narratively let the kid hit it <laughs> I don't oh, oh, know if it's you, possible to do you, I'm willing to spend my wrath you want to I do really like a a Final Fantasy esque prayer sequence for the yes. child. Yes! I want. I want. I want us all the. I want to use my sacrifice levitation for us all to circle around like it's the Odin summon and and infuse this child with the. I'm willing to spend all my wrath points. Yes. Yeah. I will. I will allow you to do it, boop, and I will boop. then modify it so that the child is hitting. With the same stats as the like the regular farmers would, just to so see. it's just so it's see. now that's now infused with psychic energies. We're like, you can do it, child. I'm like nudging its little hands to like grasp it better and hold it better and like kind of influence it with like my psychic powers. Like, you can do it, son. Oh Whoa! shit! It, it got two. Oh, t- oh yes! <laughs> it's two sixes. It's two sixes. It hit. Up. <laughs> Uh, oh god, okay, 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 okay. Um, the child hits. The child can shift an exalted dice to, for extra damage. <laughs> extra let us damage. See. Let us Let's see. roll the power sword. Oh god, it's 
The power sword? No, he was not taking the power sword. I thought he gave him the power sword. No! Fine. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. He does he does a total of five points, which does not beat the Geraldine's resilience. Oh. Now again, now uh. you spent two wrath points though. So so I will say that your second wrath point prayer fuels the child for a slightly better other attack damage or sorry, damage roll here and we'll see. We'll see. No, I rolled terribly. Uh, so I mean, each... I'm okay with just doing a reroll instead to bump up those dice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Fair Everyone, enough. give this child your energy. God damn it! Give him my energy! Just give it a button. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, like, the, the, chi- the child is like, just... I want to have my mind wiped and like just like grabs the power sword and shoves it through the Geraldine's like one remaining eye and like just jams it in there. Are you you're allowing him to have the power sword? Brain? Of course I am. And he's just like shoving it in with all his power and like the Geraldine's still on fire and like oh and then the Geraldine just like. Like finally flumps down, dead. <sighs> oh, the I, Messiah! I I come I come up to the child. Uh, we're not out of combat yet. Oh, yeah, we're not out of combat. Oh, oh, that's right. I would like to remind you, gentlemen, Jill, that you decided that we killed that to blow uh, all of our sec. wrath dice on killing this in one turn. You, you monsters! I'm just gonna say I'm going to spend a rune dice so you, so you can actually mark that down, um, and I'm going to uh, seize oh, the. Initiative. I think you have three left, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I think yeah, you took the one off already. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna now. have this guy go as this Geraldinelet walks around you. And like this, this somber piano music starts playing oh, as it comes no. up beside the corpse of <laughs> of its mother, and just like, yeah, 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 and it like it kind of like flumps on its belly, like trying to poke at the like the head of the Geraldine that is still crisping from the psychic you know, uh, from, from the flame or fire on its back, and the power sword through it. So it's like, this Geraldine that's just like, poking it, like, meh, meh, meh. Okay, so, are we technically still in initiative? Well, now, now that that's its action. It's just basic, I wanted to spend a rune okay. to make you feel bad. Now I'll let you go. <laughs> the players okay. can decide which, which order they can want I, to go in. Can I, can I please go? Yes, mm-hmm. of course. Okay, so... I walk up to it <laughs> over here. Oh, oh, oh no. I look down at then I look at the child and I go that there's a, I look at the child and so it's like uh we don't Which have any guns to get we don't oh, no, no, I, I don't care about the, I look at the okay. rattling child and uh Okay, so I look the reeb <laughs> and I go reeb. Like we, I really wish we were out of initiative so this could work. No, what do you I, want to do? What do you want to do? Okay. Like, at this I point, want, okay. we can be this? out of initiative. Because it's Reeb. just crying now. Yeah, Reeb okay. Van Horn it, is it listening. Got defeated, it got defeated by depression. So, yeah. Reeb, Reeb uh, if you could come here, please. Oh, of course. Reeb happily uh, may, may I, may I the, borrow... Uh, do, you, do you still have like a pistol, or does Zedek have a pistol? Before you, before you like ask that, one. may I ask why I, you're asking for it? Please... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Z- Captain Zedek, could you come here and everything? We must I, teach I the time. Soaps on everybody, get your food and the, the rattling. I, I, I ask, I ask Zedek, like, may I borrow your pistol? No. Oh, actually, fine. Got it. I, that, Lord, I need to borrow. With me, are you just going to execute this poor thing? <laughs> yes. The child must have? learn. He's already learned. Why do enough. I need to learn? <laughs> At this point, look, I'm just Since no one's giving me a weapon, child, you'll now henceforth be known as Tater Tot. And for your valiant, your valid bravery in battle, you, you have been rewarded this name. 
And I feel it might be time to introduce to you to the Imperium of Man. I feel you become an excellent rattling in the, in the, in the forces of it. And I need to test your willingness to serve the Imperium of Man. You would make an excellent candidate, perhaps a rattling sniper. It would be wonderful to see you excel. So to this point, I point my hand over to it to get ready to do a psychic power. Will you let it live, or will you let it die? <laughs> and the, the, like, the Geraldine lit still vainly poking at the, the, like... It's okay, the whatever the child mother. chooses, like... Uh, the, oh, the child's just, like, looking at this tiny animal, and, like, looking up at Lorne, and chat, chat, what does chat think the child should do? Oh, oh, oh no. Shall oh, it no. live, what, or shall it die? <laughs> <laughs> this is not the Imperial way. Kill, 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 kill. The flesh is weak. Ow. Kill it is. I, I look to the child. Uh, well, what is your decision? Geraldine, let your, Geraldine's your problem. You're right. You can't let one live when they keep coming back. Then I go, very well. I close my hand and do crush. Uh, can you also roll me another d6 because you have another bonus wrath dice on that? Because technically, that, that's so right. Just, just one d6. I, I actually absolutely forgot to do it, and that's a three. Okay, so. cool, 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 cool. Yeah, um, you, you, you like you, you like snap its neck. Like there, there, there's, there's. Oh no, no I don't snap its neck. What? I pretty much no, go no. good. I basically see it go <laughs> into like a ball as tiny as I can make it, and I bury it in the dirt. Zora and the bear confirmed for psycho. <laughs> <laughs> this is the oh, 41st right. millennium and it ain't cute you're living in the 20th century <laughs> uh yeah uh you like <laughs> I'm tater tot welcome tater. to the impairment of man tater tot brain please uh, give tater tot the, the 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 button the clicker thing that summons a ship at some point to get recruited uh, do I have one of those like how you um, took a second to just go. Ah! I mean, like generally speaking, you'll be able to dispatch shovels later. Like this is just like a, you know, this is we just can... kind of a like initial yeah. reconnaissance. No, mission. no, no, so... no, 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 no. This child is not going to simply join the Imperial Guard. Look at him, and I hold him. He has Ugh. the wisdom of Elmdis Sire with him, young boy. And I'm holding him now, like by his head. Will you Alpha, if you're listening to this, we need it. art for Tater Tot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess Tater Tot's going to become a tech priest. I'm going to call that the work of the debt collector. So, we, Tater Tot companion acquired. <laughs> I will teach you everything I know. I would pray that you don't do that. About it? Please don't it's just like, like, like completely completely just stunned and like as this has happened like you notice that four of the rattlings have now just kind of surrounded captain zedek <laughs> i suppose that means dinner's ready boys excellent we follow I... you yes you you got a speak good voice yeah you <laughs> For those Captain, of you Zedek, 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 Zedek. Captain he is Zedek. thousand yards staring at this scene unfolding before him, just like Cap just Captain si Zedek silence. has a silence. talent that allows him to accrue devotees, and so oh. Oh. so now he has some some rattling devotees <laughs> who will follow Zedek. him around and basically be able to take hits for him. Okay, we, we so, kind of need Chat, I want you to I want you to picture this in your mind like exactly what he just said. Devotees for a rogue trader. If you ever played a 40k tabletop and know what the lookout sir thing is, yes. that's exactly what that is. So you'll see flying fat ratlings going, Rock out, sir, and then this whoosh <laughs> takes yep. shots. Yes. That's exactly so, what it is. Hey, the hey, mashed Thurston. potato platoon. Thurston, I got a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Arendelle? Uh For that, for that act of wanton animal abuse, is, is yes. Lauren going to be receiving our first little point of corruption? Uh, I, 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 I mean, wait, like, wait. 
What happened to you <laughs> setting them on fire? They were attacking us then. Yeah, that's what it was going to as well. It Did you even try to feelings. roll a persuasion check you on didn't it? Have to do that. <laughs> I, I think, I think I need to point out. I want to save corrupt, corruption for something truly heinous, and I don't think we're even close to the bottom of the barrel. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. High brain, <laughs> economically lawful good. Everything <laughs> what? No, that, that, that is not what I said. That is absolutely not. You're the one <laughs> condoning this, Thurston. You're condoning this. I want to be on record saying I strike you down. <laughs> I also okay. assume that Reeb is a... Uh, like cracking open these corpses and looking he's at cracking them, right? open the large one he is not touching the meatball of the baby because he has some standards thurston <laughs> <laughs> well sir yeah 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 uh, you go through the the like burning husk of the corpse. oh shit it's still uh, on fire right yeah yes <laughs> ah yes vivid uh, an autopsy well it's on fire i've never done this before Woo. um <laughs> And with that, yeah, like there's there's a bit of a break after this, and we can kind of go back to the to the farm, to the farm, to the firm. To the firm. and um, and yeah, as as we're back on the uh, the <laughs> God damn it, <laughs> <laughs> I need to. Oh wait, wait hold on, wait, on wait, wait, we can't go back to the to the farm yet. Hold on. Are we still Hold no, on. we're not done yet. We're not done yeah, yet. No, 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 oh, okay. no, you're not done. I'm just I'm switching over okay. the combat map because oh, like Uncle okay. Hedge Hedge. Okay. Uncle Hedge Hedge has put together like his, his food, which you can all partake in. You're, yeah, you know, you've, you've you worked out a bit. That 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 raised some like concern levels, um, and and yeah, as, as like this is going on, Uncle Hedge is like, so it seemed like you're going to take your your boy. Yes, and uh, we would also uh, like a taste of some of your barbecue, as uh, we are, we are in the market for uh, someone with good cooking. Rotisserie chicken, here go. I, I I take a bite. What? How many diseases do I get? No, it's basically like the best food you've ever tasted. Oh, like oh. You, you, you 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 bite into it and it's perfect. Lord, Everything okay? about this food is my perfect. My mustache and everything is risen. I have like psychic lightning coming at me, like I'm like a super saiyan and going. <laughs> We got our bonus points. <laughs> I, 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 I want to point out you are immediately hired. <laughs> someone in the chat. For? Someone in the chat wrote, "I've got cholera. I've got cholera." <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Bonus points. Well, uh, uh, Captain Zedek, please explain. I'm going to eat this chicken. I go off to eat the chicken. We, as part of our diplomatic mission, we are rewarded for doing certain things to advance the cause. And you, Uncle Hedge Hedge, are a stellar example of imperial culinary talent. In fact, so good that we would be honored if you would join our crew. And if you happen to have someone else who is slightly in, less good in, in lock the cook? space excuse me in lock the space as up in the space yes up in the space i'm cooking I'm, the space i'm waiting for the uncle the to start going <laughs> <laughs> i mean kind of now yes <laughs> we're going down to the house of sausage i got my halfling shoes off <laughs> Here it's barbecue pit halflings. <laughs> uh, I could I could cook up in the space. Yeah, that you know what it would work perfectly fine. In fact, if you could find someone who is maybe a little less talented that we can pretend is more talented, that would be swell. I will go up in the space. I just I gotta deal with none of my Geraldines here. I, are there Geraldines in space? No, no. maybe, but no. no. Never have to see them. You'll never see them again. I really like uh, how everyone you? had a different answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. Uh, would, no. would any of you like to make a attempt to, like, uh, um, persuade, I, I will, intimidate, persuade. or That's whatnot? That's all Zedek, yeah, yeah. man. 
yeah, let's let the, the good captain here uh, see if he can convince uh, Uncle Hedge Hedge finally to, to join the crusade. Wow, oh, that's yeah, he sure that's does. A glory, too. He sure does. And that's a glory, glory, hallelujah. Uh, yeah, so you are not only like able to, because you can shift one exalt, because it was only going to be like a difficulty four for that. Uh, so you can shift one, and you can not, like, you not only manage to convince Uncle Hedge Hedge, and um, who you learned their previous name was Lilgo, but now Tater Tot, uh, you convince basically the entire staff of the Grumble Tum Tum farm to join you in space. Uh oh. That's I would list off the names of ratlings that Alpha provided me, but I will save those for another day. <laughs> oh, uh, I was, you know, I was going to ask them their names, and I had a couple great names for him if he didn't already. Oh, gosh. I, um, yeah. I come up to Captain Zedek, and uh, I go, I, and as, as I assume like, things are getting filed in, and you know, paperwork's in, we send a server down, I don't know. Then, uh, we're like, uh, Captain Zedek, quick question. Yes, Lauren. I don't like this place. Nor do I like the name of it. As much as I'm aware, we do have cannons upon our ship to basically orbital bombard any position on this planet. I, I know put we my usually finger up to it. Lauren's bearded face and I say, not yet. <laughs> I violently, I, I vibrate angrily <laughs> and I leave. <laughs> I, I appreciate that the first thing you wanted to use your bombardment on was the Grumble Tum Tum farm. At this point, a <laughs> uh, brain has like climbed to the top of one of these rooftops rooftop yes. buildings and is just with tater tot still in tow has his sword out and is just screaming and henceforth your history shall know this as the battle of meat place alpha where the glories of the only sire in the name of the forge world Lemuria. and like no one's listening i'm still screaming really loud is the child yeah. just going to fall off his back at some point like like a tv aerial that is like loosely fastened to a roof the, the, the child is, is very much just like, uh... Um, okay, so with that, uh, let's let's just say that you've, you've managed to recruit these, these halflings from the Grumble Tum Tum Farm. Uh, you've got Tater Tot, and so the ones that I, I think will go with you will have, we'll have Tater Tot uh, join with you, I suppose, and then the four devotees. Uh, but, but Uncle Hedge Hedge and the rest of the Swine Tooth Farm are going to st stick around and they'll be picked up later. So like video game logic, you're going to you're going to be able to extricate these these guys from the planet later. Yay, bonus points. Yeah. We're, we're uh, doing the you, Fulton extraction. But you do know that um from your talks with Mayor Hugpin that these oh. other like divinely tall beings supposedly live in the capital in the equatorial region. I suppose it's too far to walk. Oh yeah, yeah. That you definitely have to take like your your Arvis there. To the Arvis, then, boy. Indeed. Yeah, we're going to have to travel either way. But before we go, we probably should gather one, a couple of resources if we can. I know we're still looking to get food and manpower for the Moderata. Uh, so, but with my Medicaid check, did I learn anything useful? About the Geraldines, I mean, aside from the fact that apparently they can make good barbecue. Um, like, the, so you, you know that the Geraldines, like, the younger ones would, would have, like, digestive acid that they can, like, spew out. The oh. actual Geraldine, um, has, like, a, like, horrific bite attack. Uh, and though you murdered it before I got to use it, you could tell that, the, like, the, the mature form of the Geraldine was probably really well suited to rolling. Hmm. Like, had you not have killed it with the child interruption narrative declaration, it you might have all been in a perfect, like, line setup for it to have rolled all over you and basically do some kind of na 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 na, -na attack. Beyblade, got it. I love Beyblades. It's a good show. It's a great uh, show. <laughs> yeah, well, nothing of particular note. We're not going to be coming back here in any regard. In any case, you can eat these. Surely we can... Uh, excuse me. Pi, are you done monologuing? Ah, uh, yes. I jump off the roof. Do you what? believe that these would be suitable for nutrient-paced usage? We are a little low on food at the moment. 
Hmm, I suppose so, yes. Though it's more than likely we would have to refer to the only expertise these uh, horrible, these beings are uh, partake in, culinary arts. Um, oh, are you done with it for the most part, by the way? Oh, yes, nothing of particular note. Acid, acid bile ducts and strong jaws and very thick pointed backs. Nothing of extraordinary note. Ah, good, good. I'm going to reach over and I'm going to rip off one of the horns. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. like, like crunch rips right and out. And I'm going to give it to Tater Tot. This is yours. This is your glory. Oh. And then I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> and, like, yeah, he just kind of, like, stripped. My glory. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Good. <laughs> the child grow. <laughs> um, yeah. So okay. Uh, so you, I, I assume, after d- doing all of that, you're going to make your way back to uh, the, the like the farmer's field where you landed the harvest. Yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. Okay. We're so going to fly your way back there. Here. Um, you know as what? You're... I would like to make a narrative dec- declaration, if possible, while we're absolutely like, leaving. Knowing that we are in dire need of food as part of our mission. I would like to make a brief stop in the town itself and announce a little competition for the denizens. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even have to make a narrative declaration for that. That's that's just sure. you doing something. Um, like, what, what... Let's see here. So you're wanting to kind of, like, I don't know, like, some kind of cooking contest? <laughs> Residents of happy feastings, I... We do appreciate your reverence for us divine tallest, but you can do so much more and be with the tallest yourself. For the tallest must eat and eat lots. So we have devised a little competition for you. Whoever can cook the best meal may serve in the presence of those who are even taller than us, the tallestest among the divine. You have 48 hours to cook the best meal possible when we will return and judge it. I was hoping you were going to say, you have 48 hours to comply. (laughs) (laughs) I I think that's going to probably be a leadership test because you're basically trying to, like, whip these people up into, uh, into, like, a very specific kind of action. So, yeah, give me a leadership test. This is a cooking war. Yeah. yeah. God you know, damn! Wow, that's a nice ah, roll. And, another and that's, a, that's a glory. glory. Nice double glory on and your glory your persuasive moment. powers, my dude. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to not only say like like this will be a big success. This will definitely um, complete your need to get like the foodstuffs you want. Like the, <laughs> that that kind of build up will get them going and like. At least this this town is going to be able to provide your necessary quota of foodstuffs for your ambassadorial score. I need to. Uh, can I have Reeb do something real quick, taking Zedek aside? Oh yeah. Uh, please, Captain, if I may have a moment of your time. Of of course, Lord. Uh, no. well, that, that, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> wrong. Zedek wrong. Is just so Sorry, wrong. Sorry, a bit lightheaded still from suffer, suffering earlier. He's just seeing. Uh, it, it's fine. I'll Sorry, have to take Reeland. a. I'll have to take a look myself. at that a bit later. Don't worry. Little is fixed. You never hurt anyone. In any regard, we need to. Um, so, if we're talking about getting points, correct? Since everyone is very keen to be in on this hip and happening trend of uh, points. Do you think that we might get more points if when we order this massive competition to be going that we just so happen to <clears throat> pull in a uh, requisition for our very esteemed Katia Van Nord to drop by for a quick inspection? I think that's a wonderful idea. But you know, from what it seems, this uh, Uncle Hedge Hedge is a pretty, pretty good cook. He's scratching his feel, butt while you say that. <laughs> I would almost feel bad yielding such a wonderful resource when we could get someone just as just as good as him for the esteemed lady. I think she wouldn't miss him if she didn't know he was there. You fucks. Think. You find the like the first good rattling cook and you're like, this one's ours. <laughs> Precisely my thinking, my good man. Precisely my thinking. After all, who would want one 
excellent cook when you could have an entire dozen, several dozen, multi-dozen, hundreds, thousands of stellar rattling cooks working in your kitchens, cooking you fast, fast feasts. I'm, I'm See, sure she wouldn't you, miss one. You, you understand full well. Of course. <laughs> Besides, much as I appreciate pies cooking, I much much too much dislike uh, the taste of motor oil and C-150 grade chemical. I like C-152. I don't think I'm particularly keen on having another organ replaced either. <laughs> what? Um, and um, with you see that... see in the background uh, yeah, tapping on his runic sundial? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that, you, you all make your way back to uh, the ADD farm where you find that the charred field is empty. And as you're approaching, like, the harvest is gone, but then another one comes down from the sky and lands, torching the farmer's second field. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and opens up, opens up the uh, the back, the back, and you can see like a a much like lankier shaped servitor in the front. Okay, I approach, I approach the harvest. Oh, hello. So, which one are you? Greetings. I am Servitor, the DM. Uh, that's cool. I, I push it to the side and I keep walking. <laughs> I am I, uh, your I... pilot. I was assigned here after it was determined by Tech Priest the... Gamu 4224 that the, the prior the... Servitor had been tampered with. Did, uh, did, does, did this Servitor smoke a lot? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Ah! Hi, hi, kids. Kids on the office. I need to smoke my watering can. Yeah. Hi, it appears as though your good friend Gamu has decided to send you another message. Please go to it! And I shove him very brusquely to the what servitor. do you want? We are beginning the takeoff sequence. Okay. We have to go to our next objective, boys. Top, top. I will. I will hate. hate On our way to that, Tech Priest Gamu Four Two Two Four has assembled a list of ongoing maintenance requests for the debt collector, audibly for the review of Captain Zedek. Item the first. Captain Zedek is going to put his headset in and just ignore this. <laughs> 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 it's just the entire time it's like vapor. It's like da na 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 <laughs> Brain has like made... taking meticulous notes on the death trap ship he's on. <laughs> Brain has made sure Tater Tot takes notes while he doesn't. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, I would. Is Tater Tot strapped in? If not, uh, Tater Tot. So in. all of you are on one side, and then on the other side are the four Rattlings and Tater Tot. Where's the child wait, seat? Wait. God damn it! Yeah, Where's yeah, the child seat? Uh, on top of that, do we have a child seat? But it looks like it's like a gray knight, like whatever that thing's called, oh like baby God. carriage. So it's yeah. oh like that. God. So we put in the yes. seat. Yes, there's absolutely one of those like freaking dread knight. It's all themed. <laughs> I'll say, if we don't have a if we don't have a child seat, surely we have an overhead luggage compartment or something. Please don't what? torture this boy worse than he already has been. Don't put him in the luggage bin. It'll be safer than being over here. And get Not rattled baby around carriage. as we break Atmo? Have you been rattled around in this thing? Do you remember the first I, time we took one of these damn things? I, I yes, buckle in really the does. rattling child and, and everything else. And I was like, you're going to be so good at killing. And then I go to my seat. You're going to be so good at The Emperor. The Omnisire. The Omnisire. Wrong one. It's the, it, it, it can do both. It's the wrong one. <laughs> I'm, gonna help the I'm going to help Tater Tot get strapped in if nobody else is. All right, I've already buckled it. All right, oh, so yeah, we're, yeah, all, yeah. we're all Warned settled in. in. Yeah. And the the Arvis like begins to to take off, and and you can you, you can hear it sort of blast off, probably destroying the third field of this farmer whose name you never. How did it move to a third field to take off? Uh, it probably just, like, turned and then fired its <laughs> retros and burned the third field. 
Um, and yeah, you're you're carrying on again over sort of like this idyllic train. But as you're you're making your way towards the the equatorial location that you know where this large city would be after conferring with the debt collector, uh, you can see that like it's it's becoming night out. The sun is setting as you are like heading towards your destination. Uh, the servidor continues on requisition request number one nine two. One, nine, two. Zenix waking up from his The recycling morning. systems in the lower decks are suffering malfunction. We have lost three Come crew members here. in the past month. Come back here, <laughs> suffering malfunction. Oh, Ca- Captain Zenix, uh, what are we going to do with the thousands of tribals that are inside of your ship? They've, it's basically Necromunda down there. And they keep doing things. And last time we checked on them, one of them was yelling, more darker, another one, our brethren. So it's... That, that, they're, they're causing a ruckus of the place. I never go down there anymore. Uh, well, my usual way of do- going about dealing with them is letting the cults thin their own ranks. Maybe have a little divine intervention every now and then, but... We're just waiting for a chance to dump them on a planet, and then they'll, I'm sure they'll take care of the rest if we need them to take care of some bad guys. Or yeah, I'm sure we're dumping them. It should be noted that the uh, the deck collector certainly has a lot of different uh, groups and tribes that that inhabit its lower levels, uh, particularly just factions that have formed, be it like strangely like offshoot religions or uh, people who worship certain aspects of the ship or people who have essentially turned into gangs like there's there's a lot going down in the deck collector you know we could probably tune in and see what they're proselytizing today if you'd like uh, sure one of them saying the death cult death cult i have like a pad open that's like i just like there's yeah. like cameras that's looking in with some crappy audio and it's like that some are saying daca there might be the the digger knobs uh it's kind of a claw for it chooses the worthy. Uh, you know, just, there's... Would you like to see me probe Dies Domini? <laughs> I don't speak my gothic. I, I, my, I don't either. But... Well, God, and so, then you hear uh, this, this clunk. Clunk. Is clunk. there like a warning system in the... No, no, and then like the ship shakes a little bit. Clunk. The uh, DM, what is going on? clunk like you're just hearing this clunk sound like something's maybe hitting the exterior and then there's a bit of shaking in the arvis uh, i'll go outside and await <laughs> do not <laughs> i would no. implore you to reconsider <laughs> <laughs> i'll open the window <laughs> <laughs> just defenestrates the party As the I, DM I, I, status report what's going on Issue number two hundred and fucker, what's on? What's hitting us? Uh, like, so, so, are any of you just like, like, leaning now and looking into the cockpit? Yeah, we're, like, yeah, we're yes. looking. Yeah, so all of your heads back. like lean over and you you look and you see that the um, the, like the the cockpit window is covered. Like it's this this runny liquid substance that's like completely obscuring the outside. Huh. What is... The, uh, I'm gonna... I probably should deploy the uh, countermeasures. I'll turn on the windshield wiper. <laughs> yeah, you, you like... I, I, so I assume, Zedek, you're, like, going into the co-pilot seat at this point? Oh, yes. Yeah, so you, you unstrap, like, what the... And you, you go and you activate the, 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 uh, the holy wind windshield wipers. Ah, uh, yes. Necessary Taken out by the blood angels during the second Space Hulk of that STL, the windshield wiper. <laughs> <laughs> the Federated hey, Ventana. We lost a lot many, of good Terminators. Yeah, that many day. Terminators <laughs> died to bring us this technology. <laughs> and yeah, you so you activate the, the the holy windshield wipers, and that's when you notice like there's there's this like almost um, white liquid that's covered up a lot of the, uh, the the cockpit window, and as the the wipers move it, there's this like chunks in it, and you see what are clearly like like hunks of potato and some what carrots and then you hear this like this thunk and can you give me a, an awareness test really quick Captain Zedek? sure yeah so aware 
so Ooh. aware. Ooh, uh, not quite aware enough. Some you hear another kathunk, and then there's just this like deluge of more um, like white liquid and like various little like chunks of food stuff that start like peeling back on the cockpit. All right, do we have like a hatch on the roof or something? Uh, on an Arvis lighter, no. Yeah, we're kind of stuck in here. <laughs> It's it's kind of a terrible box, like, unarmed, or very, yeah, unarmed, terrible craft. Don't say that too loudly to me. I, you know, I, I do what I can. Uh, so, yeah, you, you just, you hear this thunk, and then, yeah, the, the windshield wipers are desperately trying, but... And, and then the servitor, unable to establish proper visual parameters. Hmm. Um, Concerning, where are the where are the uh, pong, where are the pong. escape systems? Can, can One I of the, the rattlings escape system. Can I find a parachute, please? <laughs> um, uh, are there no parachutes? <laughs> There's no. Parachutes. Yeah, I told you this about the, the budget cuts. Man. Do any of you know why there are potatoes on the Arvis? All right, time to find out. Everyone's strapped in. I'm going outside. I'm gonna look around for like a like a like a rope or like um latch thing. A rope. You know, like, like something something to kind of latch myself to the Arvis. Um, That's when you, as you're looking around, uh, all of you feel this sudden lurch, and there's this sound from the right side, and um, Zedek, you see that the. Um, the, the starboard turbine uh, engine has, like, just had a massive, like, backup and has exploded internally, causing you to start losing altitude rapidly. Uh, I'm going to very frantically uh, strap in and engage the manual override. Nothing to worry about, just a little turbulence. I'm just pan panicking, like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't want to actually have to use my skills. Yeah, um, I, so I, I'm assuming you're going to try to, like, make a piloting test in order to level this out. With gusto. I'm going yeah, to attempt yeah, to yeah, keep yeah. us from... I'm uh, a, we're going to have to keep this box from becoming a coffin. Can okay, I go so, up so to give him a strength that. assist uh, as well? What are you wanting to do? I want to go up and give him a strength assist to pull on the throttle because I know how... I know, I've, I've flown an airplane a little bit once. I held the yeah, stick of an airplane before. I know how yeah, bad that is. You can definitely, like, go over there. Um, and that leaves... Uh, Pi, you're still trying to, like, look for stuff to go out. Yes, I am. I, I'm trying to make in aerial repairs. Okay, okay. So you're like, I'm going to open up the back seat. Just wait. Um, okay, and uh, Lauren, what are you doing during this? I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm sitting my job. How does Lorne oh, freak the die. Die. I try to cast levitate on the Arvis to keep it from falling. <laughs> yeah, give, give me a give me a psychic test. Sure, this is bullshit. I love it. <laughs> I'm okay. Now uh, I, I see you perils die. this. Wait, here it comes. So no, no, I'm good. Oh, wow. I'm good. Oh yeah. That's yeah. a nine. Acid. So you're you're using your, your your psychic powers to try to stabilize it. Um Reeb, can you give me your uh, your check to to assist, and then we'll have uh, well then we have Captain Zedek's piloting check, which which is okay. Uh, I think I think we'll see how Reeb helps out here. Yeah, but I'll oh, say yeah. I'm, don't expect much from me. I'm just yeah, doing no, no, this to help like a little back. bit. So what happens here is like Captain Zedek and Reeb are are like Reeb's pulling back on the throttle with Captain Zedek, and Zedek's trying to maintain maintain it. There's more of these kathunk kathunks that are happening. Uh, Pi, can you give me a um, Awareness test. No. Yeah, sure. Yes. No. Oh. Yep. Not allowed. Do it. Okay. Do it now. Yeah. I mean, machine gun. Uh, you you kind of you kind of like are, aren't noticing anything during this, but there's more like kathunk kathunks. As, All right. Uh, but I'm, and so what what what? Oh, go ahead. I'm not gonna strap myself in. I'm a strong guy. I had to. I've probably had to do this before. Um, fair. So I'm going to make sure everyone's strapped in, and I'm going to open the pod bay doors, Hal, bracing myself. Yeah, I think there's uh, only like a back door that opens. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so like it goes like comes like like crank open all the all the rattlings are like pulling out potatoes and onions and like just snacking on them like nom, 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 nom. So um, they they stress eat a bunch, huh? Don't they? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and you don't even know how they hide these on them Kindred because spirits. like they only have so much room, but they've been eating a lot. Um, yeah, and what you what you see as you open the back door's brain is you see these like what your visual processors uh, process as like ceramic pots flying in your tailwind and like heading like hurtling down towards the surface. What? I'm going to. Um... I've got long extendo arms. So <laughs> I'm going I have to, extendo arms. I'm going to try to pull myself up on in between the engines and see what the okay. hell is going on in our roof. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All the while this is yes, happening. Sir, no. <laughs> it's it, it, the only thing playing through my mind is like Metal Slug 5's boss music is playing in the background all this. This is so fucking <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like Zedek, Zedek and Reeb are like madly pulling, and it's very clear like their efforts aren't like aren't doing too too much to like stem it. But like in the back, Lorne's just like man, psychic powers. So Lorne's really doing all the work to prevent this <laughs> from being this terrible crash. So, but like so we have for Reeb story and... wise, so story wise, it's we're still crashing. I'm to oh, the yeah. point where I'm I'm doing all my psychic mount enough to make it to where we're not going to hard crash and all die, but just enough towards as gentless as a landing, but still pretty rough that we can make it. Just so we skin yeah, instead exactly. of splash. Um, and so I'm just gonna roll something here. Roll forty-six. No, we're oh, dead. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> um, okay, oh dear, so... dead on, sir. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, 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 okay. Um, so, so Pi, as you're up top, yes, you start seeing more of these ceramics flying, and like one of them, uh, like as, as you're witnessing this, one of them slams into the other turbine, and it bursts can into I, flame. Can I try to make a reactive pff- action? Pieces shatter. What are you wanting to do? Oh, I want to try to shoot it. Yeah, sure. Give me an attack roll. This is going to be like exceptionally difficult. That is a okay. Please complicate and shoot the engine. Please, <laughs> please shoot the other I engine. Hope out. I, do. <laughs> I really do. Hope I, do. I, I always love a party shoot that's myself like, in the brain. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Complication. <laughs> We're all gonna die. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's find out what this. Does. The good news is, is that it's a radioactive pistol. So it's probably not going to do catastrophic physical damage. Well, probably. you know, we, 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 <laughs> should, we should learn this here. Um, can you roll me 2d6? I would love to. Yeah, please do. Please Fuck. please roll me 2d6, sir. And let's, let's find out what the result of this is. Oh. Um, 45. I feel... Mm. <laughs> That's okay. a higher spin. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um... Yeah, yeah. So, so you 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 go to fire your pistol, and like as you're doing so, this this ceramic bolt hits you in the chest, uh, exploding, covering you in potato soup, um, and doing uh, like eleven total damage. So, with your resilience, I think you take two wounds from that. Uh, I do. I guess I'll try to soak them. Yeah, yeah. Give, give me some determination here. Yeah. Uh, which will reduce them and turn them into shock. Um, and your your pistol, like, goes just, like, blasting across the side of the hull, missing what you were intending to, to do. Nice. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so so as that, yeah, yeah so you take two, two, two shock. Yeah. And then your pistol um, falls out of your grip. Oh, no. That's bad. It tumbles away. I do. I do observe it. That was shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it just like goes into like the black sky. I, as I quickly want to do, mm-hmm. as with my psychic might. Fuck! I don't have any wrath. Ah, fuck! <laughs> ah, fuck, fuck! Hold up! You blew it Can all, I... intimidating a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't yell at me. 
Wait, do I do I even have the thing? Wait, no, I do. I have I have phantom grip and as I'm sitting here and I'm like doing the levitation stuff on the ship, I feel the king 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 kink of the I, gun. And I go Okay. Ah. I'm gonna allow this but 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 yeah, I'm okay with the difficulty things. And I also yeah. have wrath. I'm going well, no, to no, say no, that's ended, so I'm going to say that, like, you can do this, but this is not, like, you using your powers in your typically controlled manner. Like, if Actually, you want to no, do this... Actually, no, someone did give me a wrath in, 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 in brain, so they just did okay. it. Okay, I'm so. still going to say you have to make this test at unbound, which means you have to roll two with wrath it. dice for this, because you're, you, this is not your typical training. This is you freaking out and using your psychic powers. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. So I'm going to hold that wrath. So... Yeah. So unbound at this point, I basically add two wrath dice, right? It's two wrath dice for this check. Yep, yeah. cool. All right, so, oh, not that one, not that one. We did that one wrong. And boop, no, 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 get button. Right. I will own you. All right, phantom grab. Whoosh. Oh, Ooh, oh nice. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So I question, uh, glory. I, you have but, one wrath dice there. Do you have the second one? Yeah, it, both of them went through. I, was like, I, had, I did two bonus wrath on it. Uh, okay, because only one of them is showing up as the wrath dice. That's why. Yeah, I guarantee you, I put wrath two wraths <laughs> there. If you real, want me to, I'll just roll another d six. Yeah, just roll another d six. Okay, that's fine. It's a three. Okay, perfect. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, so, so yeah, you, so, so, you grab the pistol as it's flying in the air and manage to like bring it back in. Well, also holding your levitation because you have a talent that lets you. Yeah, like, I have a talent that allows me to do that without any difficulty. So it's, yeah, without added difficulty. So cool. <laughs> and so that's when the the shuttle, like, and, and we have meanwhile again in the front, Reeb and um, Reeb and Zedek who are like madly pulling the throttle, trying to keep the the shuttle from crashing, and beside them the servitor who's like issue number three hundred and twenty five, um, and then the shuttle like makes this this controlled crash and like at this point the engines are on fire but but like you manage not to to be too badly beaten up as you crash into yet another field oh wait do i go flying off um yeah yeah you, you <laughs> totally would uh let's see what kind of what kind of skills do you have that might mitigate some uh, of this i have stuff? athletics um I, I could see that we are immediately going to crash and perhaps make a break quick, back to the uh quick uh, jump off the plane so you're not going at the same speed as the plane anymore <laughs> that's a great give me idea. an athletic give me an athletics check sure i'm going to spend uh glory on this one okay yeah you got two relatively high stakes Now we play. The ah! Yeah, it's like a complication. Oh no! <laughs> All right. Wow. Um. Oh god. This is this is this is <laughs> this is a disaster. Yes. Yes, also, I, I love that I can't load. That I needed in my life. I can't right. load the stream um, either. So this is great. Roll me, roll me a d6. God damn it! That's this determines how many it. ten damage I take. <laughs> if there's anything I learned to do over the years, it's how to articulate splatter in art yeah i hope you guys have liked pie brain this will be his last session oh. um, hold on <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. all right all right here's what happens okay this is this is this is so good so what happens is okay this is machine spirit yes no some technology in the scene malfunctions um so what happens is, as this is going on, meanwhile in the cockpit, the servitor is like, issue 320, and stops. And then disconnects themselves, because this one is like freestanding, and turns and makes his way towards the back of the ship, as Pi is on top, like having all this happen. And as Pi loses like their footing, as they're just trying to get out, um, he fall, falls off the back. And, like, this gray, dead hand reaches out to grab him. And the servitor, the DM, pulls Pi back in. But needs to, needs to like, leverage themselves to do it. And so basically, like, uses all of their servitor strength to throw Pi back into the shuttle, but then is ejected out the back and hits the dirt and starts rolling and, like, breaks apart on impact. 
as the shuttle crashes down. Damn! No! Wow! Oh, we can get another one. Damn! <laughs> oh, miss, I have one. preserved it's fine. me! And I am immediately <laughs> just like, as well, we should probably crash before I do anything. The servitor oh, the tumbles so into the... light. Like you just like the, you 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 basically rush into dirt. There's like a slight impact, but nothing too shocking because Lord yeah. is just sitting there like la 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 levitate. I'm um, like freaking out, like veins popping, like I don't want to die, and it just <laughs> like it just like slides into the field. I imagine like the, things yeah, on yeah, fire yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. And, still, um, <laughs> the yeah, servitor so is like let's... flying in the distance, breaking apart. And it hits the ground first and goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so. So we've landed. Hi. Yeah, and you like exit out of uh, exit out of the the wreckage of your Arvis with both engines just completely like burned out and ruined. You find yourself like trundling through pumpkins. And, uh, yeah, I, the chat brings up a good point. When I set this up, I didn't fucking expect that the players would have, like, eight rattlings with them now. So let me just drop those on the map. <laughs> look out, Sir Token. <laughs> <six. laughs> look out, Sir when we, when we all step out of no. the, the aircraft, I'm just so, going to... Reeb is dusting himself off and says, another happy landing. Hmm? Uh, one more time, you, you robot at the, at the end there. One more time. Reeb is dusting himself off, and he says, ah, another happy landing. <laughs> I can, uh, it, just to make it easier on you, Thirsty, you just want to assume those rattlings are there, and we just do a counter of it, so we don't ha don't have to dominate play space. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah. What I'll what I'll do is I'll yeah. We'll just assume that they're there and like are around and yeah. But but for all of you, you can kind of see them. Um, and yeah, you've crashed here. It's this like tranquil night like you can still see overhead these pots being hurled and like you can hear off in the distance the like breaking of ceramics look i see chad is asking for tater tot i did not expect that tater tot would become such a big thing here so we don't have art so that's gonna be request number one to to, to our artists next we'll just year. say tater tot is safe in the thing i lauren yeah. we were coming out of the iris was like tater tot are you okay are you okay tater tot and like like you just hear my glory, it's safe. <laughs> good, 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 good. I, 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 I get a blanket and I like arrange things and uh, I get out and I get a, you know, whatever a fire extinguisher, extinguisher is called in the forty first millennium and I and okay. make it all safe. And it's like, hey, you go, here you go, and then uh, everything else. Apparently, someone drew art of Tater Tot in my Discord. I gotta find what? where that is. Oh no! Oh no! Someone needs to ask me. Uh oh! I think oh my, my god! It's so what? good. <laughs> give it, give it to me. It to put it in the chat. Put it in our chat right here. Put it, put it, I, in, I, put it in the, the, the chat. <laughs> put it on the Warhammer Discord. I'm losing connection. Pippington or uh, Chimp Pip in my Discord did it. It's so good. I Hold up! I'll, I'll put it, fellas. I'm uh, I'm losing connection. <laughs> I hate to I hate to break oh, it, but I'm so losing happy. I'm losing connection here, guys. Oh gosh. Oh, okay, gosh. okay, we're okay. done. We're okay. done. Hello? Yeah, what's like oh lord. Hello? Um, is, is everybody okay? Are we all in I mostly think... one piece? Action's fluctuating. Hi? I oh sorry. You're sorry. Hello? I know. You're Are still we... good. You're we can hear you, Arendelle. Okay. Holy crap, it is laggy. AF. Okay, Okay. Uh, just do your best to fix yourself, and we'll continue on, and we'll get to Keep you going. when we can. Keep just fix it, yeah, fix yeah. it on your end. So, so basically, I'm taking a fire extinguisher, and I'm doing what I can. Hi, <laughs> is just walking out of a slander. He is completely <laughs> calm, eerily still, and is just chanting the litany of the Electromancer. And yeah, like the, the, the Arvis is like on fire behind you. And as you can see here, you've kind of got this this um like light around, but otherwise it's super dark out. Like the sky's pretty obscured. Um you know that there are like essentially the equivalent of like flashlights and or loom, flash lumens in there that you could grab and utilize if you wanted to. There'd be probably two if any of you wanted to take one. I'm just Uh Zedek. 
We should probably get flashlights. Does anybody else not have one? We they, they do need. Ah, uh, I could hold one. I have a hand, kind of a hand free. Ah, uh, but I recommend you, Captain Jedic, to hold a flashlight for your uh, followers there. Uh, yes, the mashed potato platoon. Uh, f- lads, are you, are you okay? Are you are you dead? You don't seem to be. Or maybe I. Oh, they're just, are they eating again? I think they're just eating. I, th- I think they're, they're fine. They're, 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 they're like they're just like also grabbing like different like tiny pumpkins and stuff from around and stuffing them in their pockets. Are they also like We're using good. the fire of the Arvis as like a cooking area? <laughs> yes, clearly. Hateful. Oh, nuts! The, the map's black. Jesus. And they're uh, like look at the top left. Crunching and yeah. Oh, like the go. whole map was there. black. And they're like crunching on food stuffs and sh- can everyone give me an awareness test please actually uh no never mind never mind never mind this okay. system does not do that i do a thing i do a thing um okay uh, what's everyone's passive awareness oh you're gonna have my to look passive at my awareness hand. yeah my passive awareness is um not great Okay. I'll pass a word is two. Two. Okay. Two, two. I need you to look at mine, because I can't two. look at it with how bad my connection is. Actually, okay. uh, yeah, mine's Probably. like two. Okay, so so you do all suddenly hear this, like, this sound coming from this direction, and it sounds like marching feet on stone, like... Hmm... Well, I suppose. And then you we must... hear louder crunching. All right, boys. Gotta be on the lookout for them. They should be around here somewhere. I wouldn't... Gonna bring them back to the capital. I, I well, put Tater Tot say. with the other ratlings and going, please take care of Tater Tot. So just to make sure Tater Tot's fine. And, uh,. I begin making my way that way, which I'll move just once this way. Yeah, can you give me just a, like, flat-out awareness chest? Sure can. As soon as I click the thing, go into the thing, clicking it, thing. and that's a glory. That's that's a glory. Cool. Uh, it's ex- Except you rolled an athletics test, but that's fine. Oh, did I? Uh, oh, my bad. Hold up. I got it. There you go. Still there glory. Go. Also glory. <laughs> um, yeah, so, oh my god. So you have like you have these flashbacks to like a past mission where you like heard like someone referred to as boys and you're like all sorts of worried and you start peeking down and you realize like seeing out in the distance, you see this small light source um, here. I'm just gonna hopefully. Yeah, just do it a little. Work. Try my best to make sure everyone in chat sees what we got. So if you gotta point us to something that's yeah, different yeah, yeah. from what's in the middle just shift click it yeah i'm i'm hoping you'll be able to see this is all i'll tell you if i see anything new i have to go for probably, it now. And every, as you set not. that up is everyone fine yeah. everyone good i'm i'm okay i i would also like to check on the uh platoon and tater tot yeah, yeah, yeah. um go, go ahead Oh, sorry. Uh, which one looks to be the surliest? A- anything close to a leader among the four? Um, you can decide what the leader is. Sure. Uh, a particularly surly one. Probably okay. not the brightest looking either, but he just happens to be the biggest, so he's the de facto leader. Uh, I, I'll go up to him and I will get real close and be like, keep Tater Tot safe. That yeah, child is more important than you can imagine. If you do this, I will promote you. You have everything you need. Oh, all right. Okay. What, what's what's your name? You're, I guess you're kind of a soldier now. So what's your name, soldier? What, what is my name? You can name him. He's your minion. Do you, or do you want? Or do you want? Uh, a I, hor- do, I do. Here, let me let me let me pull up. Let me pull up one of my horrible names here. Oh no. Uh, yeah, that Alpha yeah. forced us to make. <laughs> I think Alpha named each of them. I think. Uh. He did not name the Grumble Tum Tum Farm. That was me. Um, I have four it. names. <laughs> All right, I, so I, 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 I am a. I'm Bellhog. Bellhog Fork Feet. Fork Bellhog. Feet? Yes. <laughs> All right. All right, Bellhog. If if 
you do as I asked and keep him safe, I'll give you a new title. Maybe another name. I'll pat him on his gross little head and I'll meet up with Lauren. Yeah, at this point. Also, uh, just to fix Aaron Dill, I don't know if Aaron Dill has sight on the map or stuff at the top. Do left. any of you have there sight or is it all black for all of us? Now I can see. I, I okay, he's got it. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't right. given, I so, wasn't given I, light. So as Taylor Tot is now hopefully safe, I begin to make my way towards the source of the sound. Yeah, yeah and, so uh, here, I'm just going to give you some light to yourself here. Right. Yeah, I'm going to take the flashlight and be like, hello, hello. Okay, I'm going to let you, I'm going to move you down to where I need you to be. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that can work. Yeah, I think I think you can kind of make out, actually, well, um, move to there. And uh, as you kind of like head down to you see some figures. But what kind of figures? Are they grotesque? <gasps> they are! <laughs> uh, and what you see is a is another group of ratlings. These ones are marching in like a, a gaggle, one could say, uh, and are just sort of heading down the road. Oh my god. And they have they have onions on their belts because it was the style at the time. Um. <laughs> and I see them and I'm like, "Well, Brad, it seems we've uh, possibly found some rescuers." I would not be so sure. The Omnissiah speaks through me and urges caution and gratuitous oh. violence, as always. Always gratuitous violence. Oh, of course, of course. Well, Get down. Is Get down. You oh, don't want to us see ya. You just hear this voice. Get down. You don't want him to see ya. Uh, I, I get down inside the pumpkin patch, and I look around to see the source of the voice. You see nothing. Just, just this voice. Stay down. You too, red one. Get down. Oh, who dares? And I'm going to look down and see who the hell this is. Uh, both of you can give me awareness tests. Yay. Awareness test. I oh. thought I click. There we go. And oh. I oh. bring down nice. the Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, so clearly, Brain, um, you make some kind of noise. Undoubtedly, it's my whirring servos or the, you know. And like tsh. one of these, one of these, these rattlings come. As looking over the field, well snacking on an onion. I turn my head to look at him. Mm. Then he turns and walks away. All right, I was well about to cast crush. <laughs> All right, well, they saw us, but now. Be quiet. Hey, I'll see you. Just stay quiet. I have a question. How did not see the burning wreckage up in the field? That's where they're going. They don't oh. see you, though. You should get your friends over here quick. Oh, okay. That's a good point. Hey, Brain, go get our friends. All right, yes. Friends, you need to come over here and there's a problem. <laughs> I grab him. I will fucking crush you. Do you understand me? I will forge you a new asshole if you don't quit your shit. And they're do it silently. just rattlings. How bad could it be? I, but I are you see giving me? Are, are you are you saying I can I can murder them? I'm saying that if they cause problems, then they are points with legs and heartbeats. We must consult the others first. Go get indeed, them. Indeed, indeed, yes. And I'm going to. Choo, 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 choo. Hello, friends. It seems as though there are some rattlings playing traitor, and they're looking for us. Ain't that weird? Zach, Reeb. I don't... Are you sure they're traitors? Are they not just the party trying to find us? Could be the, uh... Could be the people from the capital. Might be some guards. They probably fired their soup bombs at us. Yes. Soup bombs? Well, when I was above... Soup bombs. That's what it seemed like was being shot at us. I took a hit right in the middle of my chest. Even dented my logo. 
They'll pay for yeah. their transgression. And then you just hear from the, the southern pumpkin patch. Keep your voices down. They're walking that? away. They're too lazy to cross the stream and check it out. Who said that? Gather I'm saying at this point. Yeah, Gather sorry. I, I, round. And out, like walking yeah. out from from the the patch. And Lauren, you can see this is is another yeah. rattling. Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh dear. Hello. Yeah, hi. Why is hi. this? Who are Why? you? Stop. Why is this framed like it's in a, in a romance visual novel? Are you jealous? No, I don't want this. Is not the path this. you picked? I did not. <laughs> this is the golden are you hot yet? <laughs> we are gonna talk. You this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think, I think that is, uh, <laughs> that's where we're going to, uh, to, to oh. call for tonight, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah! Right. Jesus. Well, that was... Thank you so much. Yeah, that was oh, delightful. Boy. And I hope, uh, I hope... Oh, fun. hope everyone had a good time playing. I hope everyone had a good time watching. Yeah. yeah thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for being here. And of course, throughout the entire stream i've been asking everyone with the antlion audio thing to basically be uh rolling on through it and everything else so i've at this point i've been having nightbot basically take all of your submissions if you have not done exclamation point antlion audio now uh hopefully you can get into it basically so you know basically they're gonna bring out a usb mod mic in that uh in those headphones uh they could be shipped basically anywhere so no matter what country you are we'll be able to uh try to get that to you so be sure to do that now to kind of win on that giveaway. I'm going to be doing it here in a minute as we kind of uh, do some of our little outro stuff here. So for one, I'd like to yeah. go around the horn so you can all follow us at various things. Not to mention we also uh, have uh, a Patreon at the same time as Patreon for us Warhams. We wanted to make sure you at least enjoyed the first episode. And if you did enjoy the first episode, we would greatly uh, appreciate it if you guys want to have out. It's not required. You're still going to get the show and everything else. And I'll just say thank you to everybody who's uh, been contributing so far. You guys have been amazing. We hope you come back. This will be every other Saturday, by the way. There And for people looking for VODs and stuff, VODs will be posted into the future. So do be uh, aware, uh, aware of it into the future. We should be back on the 11th, not the 4th. 4th is obviously a holiday for America and something. But we'll be back on July 11th for the next episode. And so, with that going around the horn, the person who has played Brain... Yes, Speaker D! You can follow me on Twitter, at Super Snake Kick, and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, which has a dearth of content, but might be getting more in the future, uh, called Speaker D. And the person who's been playing Reeve Van Horn... Once again, I am Erndil, and I am, again, the writer. You can follow me at... at on Twitter at at Erndilio. Boy, that's a rough, difficult, that's a difficult sentence to say. Uh, I don't post a whole lot. I do, however, sometimes show off tidbits of the writing process behind TTS. I would encourage you to watch the show. Please watch the show. We need you to watch the show. Thank you. <laughs> and that's all. the player of Captain Zedek. That would be me. You can follow me at at Hulky Crow on Twitter. I also don't post a whole lot. I may post a funny picture here and there. Might have some content or dubs coming in the future, but that remains to be seen. And of course, the star of the show, our Game Master, Thurston Hillman. Oh, ha, ha, hi, I'm Thirsty. Uh, you can follow me at On Call GM on pretty much all the things, but mostly Twitter. Uh, real quick, I do want to uh, shout out the, the Patreon one other time because there are two things that are important for people to know. You notice we had two uh, oddly named servitors in this episode. Well, one of our Patreon tiers is you can show up in our adventures as a servitor. And despite uh, Zorin telling people not to sign up for our Patreon until they saw our content, we had two people. So that's why we had some oddly named servitors this session. And uh, on top of that, we are also hoping to build up a uh, dearth of custom complications submitted by our players or our patreon people out there so if you're interested in adding a complication to make the players lives a more of a living hell feel free to check it out that's me along, 
Along with providing content on it, on the tokens and some of the art that you saw, we'll be slowly but surely divvying them out on certain tiers and stuff like that. So if you're trying to run your own games and stuff, we'll be slowly but surely releasing some token art that you can use in your old Roll20 Fantasy Grounds or whatever tabletop, uh, virtual tabletop that you're wanting to do. So with that, let's go ahead and pick a winner real quick for yeah. basically the Antlion Audio stuff. And we're going to roll it. Hopefully they're still here in the chat and rolling it. Strategic out. Oh, you have won. Uh, basically, what we're going to get from you, we're going to basically, uh, I need you to make sure your uh, whispers are on. I'm going to whisper you here on Twitch. If you don't know what that is, quickly Google it and make sure I'm able to do so. Just say something in chat, Strategic Owl. Uh, making sure that you are still here. I need to make sure you're still alive. Because if you're not alive here in a minute or two, then I am going to have to roll again. There you go. Got it. So with that. Congratulations, Great Strategic Owl. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, and also, thank you to Antlion Audio for uh, providing that giveaway thing. Yeah. Um, they basically wanted to kind of give a nice giveaway thing. So please visit them if you ever need some uh, audio needs, which I use one myself during the VR chat streams, which will be right uh, after this at 8.30 PD PDT. And uh, with that, I think it's time that we finally leave it all, fellas. So... Thank you again to everyone for being here. It's been an absolute joy having you. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you come back. Please stay tuned to uh, Alpha Booster's channel and my channels and stuff like that for even more content. And we hope to see you there. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. So long. Tater top. Bye.